banger of a video. I'm excited for this one. Hey, look at the new music we got going on. Welcome to another live stream, guys. Today, we're going to be absolutely doing something incredible. We're going to be building a Papa Fam news app. Yes, I said it, a Papa Fam news app. Without further ado, let me know where you're watching from. Let's take a sneak peek of what we're building. Check this out. The Papa Fam news app. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. It does a ton of cool tricks, tips and tricks behind the scenes. And we've got Next.js behind this. And guys, I've done something you've all asked for for a very long time. Look at this, guys. How? Oh, I'm going to show you how to do beautiful things just like that. We're using Next.js 13. So if I want to go ahead and search for something, I can do it with dynamic data. So let's go ahead and check this out. If I type in Ronaldo. We can go ahead and search for Ronaldo. We get some nice, beautiful listings over here. We can go ahead and check the science tab. You can see we're actually gonna go ahead and load up our science tab. Click on the Papa Fam News to take us home. And guys, as always, this is fully responsive because that's how we do things here. And you can go ahead and click into something. So let's go ahead and click read more. Opens up a full screen, right? So this is not only just what appears to be a simple app. There are so many things under the hood here that you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn about dynamic data. You're gonna learn about static data rendering using the all and great Next.js 13. I'm gonna break it down as if it was easy. So I'm gonna show you, if you've been wanting to learn how to do this, this is the video that you should be after. So get excited. We're gonna be using StepZen to power all of this. So we are gonna be using an element of GraphQL, but StepZen's a lot better. It makes the whole painful process of GraphQL easy. It makes the whole thing very fast to set up. Let's go ahead and take a look at what StepZen is, right? So this allows us to build our GraphQL API very easily. We can go ahead and optimize, we can scale. It's so ridiculously easy that I'm gonna show you with so much fun today. And usually when I go ahead and demonstrate things, it's kind of like one of those things where sometimes it's a, it's a painful process for me to learn. But StepZen was easy. So I'm gonna show you just how we can go ahead and use it. So you can go ahead and write your first ever GraphQL API. We're gonna go ahead and interface it, not with Apollo like we typically would. We're gonna be using Next.js 13 server components. And to top it all off, to reduce the bugs, TypeScript. So lots of amazing stuff. If you're enjoying what you're seeing and you're excited for today's video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get excited, okay? Now, uh, before we jump into today's build, I wanna go ahead and show you what we're gonna be pulling from. So first up, we're pulling from the Media Stack API. So all of the news articles that you're seeing are in fact real. And you can see they're actually very recent. And this is all using ISR. So essentially, this is going ahead and efficiently caching the data and it's only revalidating for 20 seconds at a time. So this is using using some really high tech stuff right here, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and explain what the hell any of this means so you know what to do. I'm gonna show you how to deploy this project so you're gonna have another amazing app on site on your portfolio once you're done, okay? Now, I wanna go ahead and show you before you get started, if you've been on the fence to join us over at Zero to Full Stack Hero, or any of these videos get a bit tricky, then head over to paparreact.com, check out our flagship course. That's where we go ahead and show you, break down the whole web development cycle. We take you from zero to an absolute React hero, right? So you're gonna be a full stack hero by the end of this. So go ahead, check out paparreact.com. And we've done something incredible and it's blown up and I can't, I can't keep it alive, right? So the University of Code is now live. So if you head over to paparreact.com, at the top, you'll see the University of Code. So just forward slash University of Code, links in the description. Guys, we send you out week, no, daily, sorry. We send you out daily coding challenges, right? And it's so fun. And it's been by far the most effective way to teach our students. So all you need to do is head over to uh, paparat.com forward slash University of Code, and you'll get daily coding problems to your inbox every single day. And on top of that, we give you a bunch of eBooks as well, right? So eBooks, music, the playlist you're hearing right now, and then what's so awesome about this is the next day we give you the solution to that problem. So every day you've got a little bit of a, a coding challenge so you can go ahead and keep leveling up your skills. So make sure you go ahead, check it out. There's an example at the bottom of the screen if you're curious about how the hell we deliver it and all that kind of stuff. So make sure I want to see all of you inside of the University of Code shortly, okay? But without further ado, I think we should go ahead and break down this build. We should go ahead and explain exactly what is going to be inside of this build. So. First up, we have dynamic data. So I'm gonna go ahead and just check if my pen's working. And it is, awesome stuff. Okay, so we got dynamic data, dynamic data, and oops, I haven't saved it. Okay, dynamic, okay, we got dynamic data in Next.js 13. Okay, that's great. <laughs> 
Dynamic data, let me do it here. There we go. Dynamic data. We've got static data. So static data is where it's built at build time. A dynamic data is where every request, we go ahead and generate that inf uh, information, right? But static data, we can go ahead and do some really cool revalidation techniques in Next.js 13. I'm going to teach you how to do today as well. Okay. We are going to be learning TypeScript. Now make some noise in the chat if you're excited about learning TypeScript. Okay. So TypeScript, of course, everything is powered by React, right? So you're going to JavaScript, your React fundamentals are going to level up throughout this video and oh my god we just smashed past our first 100 likes that's what i'm talking about kenya's in the house what is up joffrey i see some of the ogs in the house today welcome to the stream this is absolutely incredible we have so much more we have steps in which is going to allow us to introduce our first ever graphql server Right, so this is going to be using Step Zen, and again, all of this stack right here, incredibly easy to use, right? And you guessed it, I'm using Tailwind CSS because if you don't know me already, I damn well love it, right? So I'm just going to write Tailwind there, right? So at this point, if you want us to take a screenshot of this, you can take a screenshot of this, put it up on your socials, whatever you want to do. But this is what you're going to be learning today, right? And there's a bunch more other stuff like the server components that are brand new in Next.js 13. So get excited for this. The music playlist has been updated, in case you're wondering. We got so many awesome tunes now, right? So go ahead and enjoy enjoy the following stream and something i forgot to mention wow we have our first ever dark mode inside of a build right so i've got dark mode which i've been excited to bring you guys on the channel so this is the first video which i'm actually going to be implementing it right so a lot of fun stuff once we're done with all of this i'm going to go ahead and deploy this to Vercel. and yes as i mentioned before all of the information that you see right here is going to go ahead and pull in live news data from media stack um, the yeah the media stack API right which is a live news website so uh, the media stack API is over here you can go ahead and feel free to check it out we get a free API key for 500 requests but I'm going to show you how to not run through those free 500 requests so that way you can go ahead and develop put it on your portfolio all that good stuff okay without further ado let's dive into today's video smash that thumbs up I've got 200 people already watching this stream I love you guys let's dive into today's build let's do this guys okay so I'm gonna taper down the music a little bit. Let's open up our terminal. So first things first, we are gonna be using Next.js 13, right? Now I like to use the template for Next.js 13, which allows us to go ahead and set up Tailwind in the process. So I like to show you everything from the ground up, right? If you completely forgot what the command is or you don't wanna come back to the video, literally open up Google, Next.js Tailwind, template right i think it's that one yeah next year's tailwind css template right come over here it's literally i believe it's the second one the second one is the one that if you always forget it, this is the one that you want to get no it's not that one it's actually a different one but i want to show you this one i think it is tss next year's tailwind no it's not that one okay uh, i'll find it i will find it because i use it all the time i want to go ahead and show you the one that i use right here we are next year's install tailwind with next year's this is the one uh, there we are. So I like to show you because it's always worthwhile knowing these little tricks, right? And the realism of it. Right? I don't want to be the fake coder who just memorizes everything when that's not how it actually works, right? So go ahead and copy this. This is going to go ahead and set up our first next app. We're going to use the uh, template with Tailwind CSS and we're going to name it whatever we want to name it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this right now. Let's go ahead and pop this open. I'm going to make this super massive on the screen. We've got Barcelona in the house. And let me know where you're watching from. Ghana, we've got Kenya, we've got UK, Somalia, Bangladesh. What is up, guys? International today. We've got US, South Africa. Hey, we've got Haiti in the house. Hey, this is cool. This is cool. Idan Massa says, you're referring to the new app directory, right? Yes, I am. Morocco's in the house. Congrats on the World Cup, guys. Absolutely crushing it. And yeah, this is this is going to be fun. Indonesia in the house. Okay, Belgium, Nigeria. Whoa, this is what I'm talking about. Jordan. I love it. I love it. Pakistan, we got everyone. Turkey, amazing stuff. Ukraine, Sweden, it's Ethiopia. Oh, this is a nuts. The pop of fam is incredible, guys. The energy is so sick. Uh, <laughs> Tony says, Sunny, what is up, man? All right, so at this point, we're going to go into, I like to have it inside of my document build folder. Okay. And we're going to go into a flow state right now. Okay. So just, you know, enjoy the build. If you find it's fast, don't worry. That's the whole reason is this video gets put up on YouTube afterwards. You can take your time. Oh my God. There are so many people in here right now. Israel, <laughs> Czech Republic, Germany, Kosovo. Oh, this is mad. Thank you guys. India, Mauritius, Japan. We're international. I love it. I, I, I'm speechless. Every time I'm speechless, honestly. So paste that in. Let's go ahead and name it. And I'm going to name this one. Let's just call it the news app. And I'm going to say YouTube because we're on YouTube right now. Okay. So pop that in. And now it should maybe prompt you at some point. Sometimes it does it. Sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. And so in this case, it did. So just hit enter to say yes. And this will go ahead and initialize our app. Okay. So 
This is going to go ahead and set up our template start a Next.js app, which is going to be in Next.js 13. And it's going to go ahead. And in this case, it's using Yarn for me. For you, it might be doing NPM. There's not a problem if it's doing that. Okay. So do not stress out. Do not worry. And uh, we have got already like three members that just joined into the University of Code. So while that's loading, I want to quickly shout out again, if you're interested, the University of Code. Guys, I promise you, we just launched it and we have over a thousand people that are signed up to that newsletter nuts so do not miss out on that okay absolutely i'm smiling so hard because it's so fun i literally every day i'm waiting i answer my own coding problems it's, it's honestly so cool All right so in this case i do them in ahead of time so that way i forget them and then i have to kind of re, re catch up on them so it's pretty cool All right so let's go ahead and cd into that new directory news app youtube awesome stuff boom okay now at this point we're going to go ahead and say code dot this will go ahead and open up our VS code in the directory that we just created. So this is our starting point. This is a good place to be right now. We can actually close our old terminal. That's nice. And what I like to do, guys, is always neaten your environment up, right? If you've got several screens, use them at this point. If not, make sure you go ahead and just use multiple uh, desktops like this in Mac. If you're using a Mac, right? That's a little trick I like to do. So here's your photo structure that you should get familiar with. If it's too big, too small, let me know. I will try my best to accommodate everyone. Right? I don't like it too big or too small. Right? Just, uh, yeah, okay. So at this point, we've got the pages folder open. Right? So pages is the Next.js 12 approach. So typically what they did was when Next.js 13 came out, they gave you an incremental adoption strategies, which means that you don't have to change all your code at once. You can have Next.js 12 code completely fine, which answers the question that many of you have had. Are your old tutorials outdated? No. They can still do the Next.js 12 ones and then use it as an exercise to then just go ahead and slowly transition them to Next.js 13. Okay. And if you want to dedicate a video on that, then check it out. Tony says, here for the good vibe during inspiration, Sonny. Thank you so much, dude. I love and appreciate all of you. So at this point, I'm just going to start off our Next.js 12 approach and then I'm going to convert it to a Next.js 13 app. So what you want to do, guys, is you want to go ahead and simply type in yarn. So command J to open up your terminal. Yarn run dev. And if you're using NPM, it'll say NPM or package lock so in that case you do npm run dev it's fine there's no right or wrong okay so at this point what i want you to do is go ahead and open up another window so i'm just going to open up another one right here and i'm going to pop it into a screen over here like so and now i'm going to go over to my local host 3000 awesome stuff what the hell guys we have 250 people watching right now across all platforms thank you abhishek Singh. first donation flew in that's some awesome stuff rio de janeiro in the house at 6 a.m so i'm talking about i love you guys honestly it's so cool right so this is a good sign so far right we've got our first page open up on the screen so what i want to do is i want to convert this to a next.js 13 project so naturally everything in the pages folder is client components like we have known for a long time now we've got the ability to use these things called server components and by default server components exist inside of the app directory okay so what we need to do is go into the package json level create a new folder and call it the app folder before we are able to use server components in this folder we have to go down to our next config now inside of here we have to enable the experimental feature for app directory this is because it's still in the beta stages but it's completely fine to use it right don't worry about it if it changes which it most likely will right i'm not gonna lie to you there'll probably be little changes then just check out the docs or check the comments everyone this is what coding is about it's about progressive movement tutorials will never be up to date because that's how it works things move right forward so that's why we have a community like zero to full stack hero link is in the description cheeky plug all right so in this case we've got this let's go ahead and oh, command j to open up our server you can see we've got a change in next config restart the server so we have to cut it with Control c and then we have to do it again this at this point you get this workspace contains the typescript version we can click allow that's completely fine okay and you see we get a bunch of things added in for us right so they've just updated our ts config file that's fine at this point open up your app and now we have a new page structure now if at any point you get confused with the next year stuff make sure you check out my next year's 13 introduction video we did a whole video on this explaining what next year's 13 how it works and the intricate parts of it so make sure if you're watching the replay there'll be a pop out somewhere around here right now otherwise check the live chat jay's going to drop a link right now for that video and just keep it in the back of your mind so you can go ahead and watch it afterwards otherwise enjoy the stream right now 
So at this point, we're going to make a page.tsx file because this is the new naming convention for files. Typically, we had the page. So if I put search.tsx, that would correspond to forward slash search on my website. Now we have a different approach, which is more of a folder hierarchical structure. So at this point, page.tsx resembles my home page. I'm going to use RFCE. And if you're wondering how the hell did he do that, right? It's because I'm using our beautiful extensions called ES7. Right, so the ES7 React snippets. So you want to make sure you've got these installed right now. That's how I did that RFCE trick. Right, so React functional component trick. So let's go back into our code right now. I've already saved this out, so we can pretty much ignore that now. Cool. At this point, if I click save, you can see we get conflicting files because if you think about what's going on right now, our website is fighting for the home directory. This is the home directory and this is the home directory. The only difference is next 12, next JS 13, right? So in this case, delete next JS 12. Say bye to that, it's gone. Okay, now at this point, Let's go ahead and see what the outcome was. And I'm going to just go ahead and make our life a bit simpler by popping it over here. And I'm going to just very simply go here. And as you can see, it created something called a layout.tsx for us. And this is because we need a root layout file because this is the new way in which we uh, structure our pages, the way we can go ahead and build them out. Okay. Guys, honestly, I just want to say I still see your chats and you guys are absolutely incredible. So I'm not ignoring those chats. Thank you to everyone. There's so much positivity in the chat today. I want to take a second just to say thank you. I really appreciate every single one of you. All right. So in this case, page.tsx, it's just the coding and the live stream is hard to get the balance. But you guys are incredible. All right. So keep on doing your thing. Now, as you can see, this does not look like Tailwind. Right. So the reason why is because typically underscore app.tsx was our Next.js way. And as you can see, what we would do is we would in import all of the styles into it like so. So at this point, what I want to do is I simply want to go into my layout.tsx because this is the new Next.js 13 starting place. And I'm going to just pop it in like so. Do that, hit refresh. And now you can see I've got my new brand new fancy homepage. Right. So that's really nice. That's that's a lot more on par with what I was thinking, what I wanted. So at this point now, we can go ahead and guys, oh my God, we got 300 viewers across all platforms. This is amazing. Thank you guys for tuning in. Smash the thumbs up button is all I ask, right? Smash that thumbs up button. Let's get this video to 500,000 likes. Let's do it. Jamie Davis in the house. I see you, dude. All right. So at this point, we've got our Tailwind CSS connected. Great start. Okay. So we can close out our app.tsx. And for now, what we can do is we can simply ignore the pages folder. Right, we don't need it at this point. So page, and you can also see it, the head. Now the head is pretty cool because here you can actually go ahead and inject any head element. So in this case, localhost 3000 is what it says here. But now what we can say is Papa Fam, Papa Fam News. Right. And as you can see now on the top over here, once I hit a nice little refresh, Papa Fam News is changed. So you can see now based on our folder structure, we can go ahead and define our pre preset um, sort of conditions that we want to do. So I want to inject something into the head. I can use the head.tsx. We've got loading. We've got error. We've got all these special reserved file names. Again, check out that Next.js video if you're confused at any point. Right. So at this point, we've got all of our interesting stuff that we needed. OK, so what we want to do now is jump into the build. So. I have a nice little deployed version here. So I'm just going to quickly pull that up on the screen. And this is going to be our reference version right here. Okay. So at this point, this is going to be the reference version that we're going to affiliate ourselves with. So you can see right here, we've got a nice website, right? So we're going to break this up into different chunks. The first natural chunk to do, or in fact, the way I like to do this, if you've seen any of my builds, is I like to go ahead and just comment out the structure that we want to go ahead and move forward with. Right now, What's really nice about this new approach is we can actually separate a lot of the presentational logic. So if I go into my layout.tsx mode, what we can actually go ahead and do here is actually separate the actual page itself versus the overall layout. So this is really, really nice. And it's actually a really clean approach. So I'm going to firstly go ahead and imagine we have the body of our app down here. But inside of the body, I actually want to go ahead and I'm going to have a div which all of the body will sit in and the children, sorry, is basically the rest of the app, right? So this is going to be the page.tsx which gets rendered here. But inside the body, I want to have a header. And at this point, I'm going to render out a component called header. Now, it's worth knowing that any component inside of the app folder is in fact a server component, a server component. There's a very big important learning step here about server components components versus client components. Check out that video, but I will be explaining in today's video as well. So we're going to create a header component, header.tsx inside of here, RFCE to create our header component. 
Now, first thing I want to do is hit save, go back into my layout and go ahead and import it like so. Now you can see we have a header, but what's really beautiful is notice how our page logic is completely separate from our layout. So you can see now we've actually got this abstraction, which is really, really neat. Right, so I prefer this approach. I think it's really nice. I think it's a lot more cleaner of an approach moving forward in the Next.js world. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do is go into my header and we're going to start pretty much building out our header right from the get go. Okay, so first thing I want to do is change this header to headers like so, and that's very clean. Then what I want to do is go ahead and introduce a div and we are going to be using the hero icons library so first thing i want to do is go to the hero icons library so let's open up hero icons.com and this is a tailwind icon library really nice icon library simply click on the documentation tab and this will lead us over to the install instructions so we want to go ahead and install hero icons dot, uh, forward slash react okay so take that over to our uh, code command J to pull up our code. And then what I want to do is split the terminal, bring it over to the side. And I want to go ahead and simply do yarn add, or if it's NPM, NPM I, right? To install. This will go ahead and add in the, uh, the dependency into our project. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import the following. So we don't need import react at the top. That's very nice. So I just need to go ahead and import the following like so. And if you are wondering how I'm searching through those things, then all you need to do is go ahead and check out this page right here. So you can find all of your stuff here, outline, solid or mini variant. And you simply change solid outline or mini at the end and then you import like so. OK, so at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pop in the bars icon at the top. OK, so I've got the bars icon at the top. So let's go ahead and do this right now. And you can see a big bars gets popped in. OK, then we have a link which will take us to the home page. So at this point, I've got the link right here, which is going to take us over to the home page. So as you can see right here, I'm going to go ahead and just show you right now. So we've got the link like so. So we've got the Papa Fam News. We've got this left section, middle section and the right section. OK, so this is going to be a grid. So this overall um, div is going to be a grid layout. So I'm going to say grid and on by default from a mobile view upwards, it's going to be grid columns of three. OK, we're going to give it a padding of 10 and the items should be aligned in the center. All right. So this is really clean so far. OK, and um, one second, guys. And then we're going to go uh, forward and we're going to introduce a link. So in this case, a link. Nice. Now, this link is going to come from the next JS link, right? So in this case, that's perfect. OK, and then we're inside of here. Now, then in Next.js 13, typically in Next.js 12, we had to introduce an A tag inside here. We don't need to do that today. Right? We actually don't need to do that now. Now it actually automatically puts in an A tag for us. So in this case, I could go ahead and put in an H1 to make it you know, symbolize something important. And then we're going to say the Papa Farm news. OK, perfect. And then this needs a href. So in this case, we're going to simply go to the home page if that's the case. And I want to do something called a prefetch false because if by default, it will prefetch the page if it finds that link is present. So in this case, you can see we've got the left side, the middle and the right side because we're having a grid column three and we only have two children, which means we have the right side that we still need to fill out. So let's go ahead and add that in right now. That's going to be a div. We're going to have a dark mode button that I'm going to go ahead and eventually code. So dark mode button is to be completed. And then we're going to go ahead and actually add in a button. And that button is just going to have subscribe now. Because what I'm doing here is I'm setting you up to go ahead and extend this project in a way that you really want to. So if you wanted to have a paywall to, you know, to go ahead and allow people to read certain articles, you could go ahead and do that as well. Right. So I'm just adding in a button there. I'm going to style it a little bit for you guys. And then you can feel free to go ahead and do it, whatever you want with it after that. So by default, I'm going to have this hidden on the mobile view and then it's only going to pop in on the inline upwards right so i'm only going to pop on medium screens upwards the background is going to be a slate of 900 the text is going to be white padding x of four uh we're going to do on a large screen i'm going to introduce padding x of eight and then on a smaller screen padding y of two but on the large screen padding y of four so you can see we've got these nice little break points sorry padding y of four and these are basically everything i write by default is mobile first and then if it has the following break point it means on a medium screen on a large screen so forth then you apply that so by default padding y of two otherwise if it goes onto a large screen increase to padding on y uh, padding wire four. Okay, we're gonna give it a rounded full approach. The button's nice and rounded. And then on dark mode, we're gonna say background should turn to a slate of 800. So, yes, Tailwind has this amazing dark modifier. And if it sees that, it knows exactly what you're trying to do. Okay, hit the refresh button 
and we should see a lovely looking button, right? So on the mo on the small screen, you can see it disappears. That's what we wanted. Okay, really nice. Um, so at this point, that's looking pretty damn juicy. So now we're going to go into our class name, type in flex items should be centrally aligned with that dark mode button. But I want to justify it towards the end. So it's pushed all the way to the right. And then when we int eventually introduce that button for dark mode, we're going to do SpaceX of two right between that and the final component. Now you're going to find that the hot reloading doesn't work that nicely at the moment. So you're probably going to have to go in and put the command R to refresh your page manually at times. That's OK. Right, it's fine. All right, so at this point now you can see that that's looking good. We need to get this middle looking the way that we wanted it. I need it looking like the Papa Fam news, right? I need it looking clean. So for the H1 tag, I'm going to go ahead and say that it should be a font serif, which gives it that old English type of look, right? That proper British look, right? So in this case, you can see this. Now, if we introduce this, Control R, then your Command R, the Papa Fam news, right? It looks a lot more like a news website now. So at this point, we're going to then introduce flex one because we are going to make actually i'm going to come back to that in a second let's do text should be center right so text should be central there we go and now it looks very nice like, look at that Oof, this is clean all right so look at that oh mate look at that perfect all right now in the papa fam i'm going to go ahead and just introduce a span right so in this point i'm going to introduce a span cut out papa fam I'm going to pop in inside of the span. So I, what I'm trying to do here is only add a class name to the pop fan bit of text. And what I want to do is give it an underline. I'm going to give the decoration, so the thickness of that line, a value of six. And I want that underline to actually be a orange color of 400, right? And now, just like that, we should see a nice little underline. And as you can see, there's a problem with our spacing here. So you can go ahead and do the following trick to get rid of that. So you can go and add a, a little space here. You can add another space over here as well, if you would like to, right? So you can do it a few different ways. And in this case, you can see the trim comes into effect. So sometimes what I like to do is simply add in our own over here like that, right? So at this point now, we've got our nice little that looks pretty good, right? That looks really nice. So things are looking pretty good so far. Uh, we just need to go ahead and style out. Um, oh, no. Okay, so that's actually the header bit pretty much done. Awesome stuff. Okay, so this is looking really nice. And guys, honestly, we're about to push 200 likes already. Absolutely incredible. The video literally just started. So thank you. Smash that like button if you're enjoying this. We have so much content in today's video that you're going to learn from. Okay, so the header is now pretty much almost done. Right. We now need the navigation links and we need a search box, right? So again, this comment approach is what I like to do. Navigation links are going to be here and the search box will allow us to type in something like this or World Cup, right? Hit enter and eventually the goal would be that it simply comes up on the search field like so. Okay, so if we clicked in search, um, I think it's on my local right now. That's why it's not, oh no, there it was just a little delay. So in this case, search results for the World Cup, right? So a lot of stuff happening here. Um, yeah, I can't control the news, <laughs> right? So in this case, so there's gonna be loads of articles. I don't know what's coming up, but in this case, nice. Okay, this is looking pretty cool. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and introduce the nav links component. So nav links component. So let's build that right now, creating the nav links component. So nav links .tsx, close that up, RFCE. And first thing we want to do is simply import it like so. So control space bar at the end, pull it up to the top. Really, really nice. Um, <laughs> Sonny is looking so serious today. Thank you so much, dude. Uh, I think that's what he means. Uh, yeah, sometimes I like to get in the game face. I mean, uh, I like to be a bit fun as well. But on that note, quick little war break because it's been half an hour and we haven't even had a war break. All right, so good morning from Malawi. What's up? So Zip says, finally, I got you live. I learned a lot from you. You're my role model. Thank you so much, dude. I appreciate you. Okay, let's keep going strong, guys. New Zealand, Mao in the house. What is up? So we've got the nav links here. So I want to do the following here. I want to go ahead and create a nav component. So we're doing this for more SEO purposes. And then I want to have a map function that goes ahead and actually runs through all the different links. So these different categories, these are categories that are supported by those uh, available at the media stack API. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a constants file, right? And this is going to be effective for later on. So head over to our top layer, add a constants.ts file. All right. Now, at this point, what I want to do is simply uh, add a const 
with the individual categories inside and you can see i've got a custom type here which is a category array okay so at this point what i want to do is i need to create that custom type definition All right so i need to create a typings.d.ts file and this allows me to add in my own custom type definitions okay and inside of here i'm simply going to make a type which is going to be a string value of either one of these values okay so at this point you can see it's going to be um Type category is either business or entertainment or general or health or science or sports or technology. So if it's a type category, it can only be one of these strings. Okay. So in this case, now you can see if I hover over it, you can see it's a category type. And because it's in the typings.d.ts file, we don't need to import it. So it's a very nice little trick that you can do. Okay. All right. So this is pretty sick. Um, let's go back to our code. And I'm going to import that like so we don't actually need the, the old school import react from react anymore that's deprecated we don't need that anymore All right and i do in the house what's up All right so we've got the categories now we pulled it in now what i can do is i can say categories dot map and for every single category i want to do the following i just need to go ahead and i want to put in something called a nav link right so i'm going to create a nav link component so not a singular not plural and this is going to take a few different things right it's going to take the is active and we're going to check on what that is in a second uh it's going to take the category that we're actually inside of ourselves so in this case we're going to pass in firstly the key so we should always pass in a key when we're mapping through something then we're going to pass in the category itself and after that we'll sort out the is active and that sort of stuff so which allows me to do that so if we're on the sports page it will do that and so forth okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm simply going to um go ahead and da -da -da, categories don't map what's my error here what have i done okay that's good that's good nav link oh yeah so we just need to create our nav link component so in this case we've got nav links we don't have nav links angular so nav link dot tsx now rfce great we've got our nav link and what i like to do here is pass in the props so in this case we're going to pass in our props come through here but with es6 we get destructuring so i'm going to split that apart get the category out and i have to write my prop definitions like so okay so we're going to have to write in our own prop definitions so for the prop definitions i'm going to actually pass in two things i'm going to pass in the category and the is active which is a boolean value it could be true or false right so is active we'll handle in a second but it's probably worth pulling it through right now okay so have links and at this point guys we need to import it okay so we now got an issue because we're missing the is active prop okay so for now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to say is active true yeah just to satisfy it for now just temporarily right then we're going to go ahead and into our nav links i'm going to render out a link so this is going to be a link component from next forward slash link and in here we're simply going to go forward and we're going to have a uh, for the firstly for the href we're going to have a string interpolation so back ticks forward slash news forward slash the category so if you click on that link it's going to take you to forward slash news forward slash category and inside of there the text is simply going to be the category that you're clicking on okay then we have the option to style it so at this point i'm going to go ahead and say class name equals and i want to have it to be uh, underlined it's going to be a deck uh, actually sorry we're going to create a nav custom nav link style and i'm going to show you how to create custom tailwind classes so in this case inside of styles or globals we have our tailwind base and here what i can do is i can inject my own custom styles into any layer i'm going to inject one in fact into the components layer okay and i'm going to create something called the nav link component okay and in order to write tailwind in this class i simply have to write the directive apply okay so that's that pretty simply now i've got a bunch of different sizing and styles that go on here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to paste it in and show you what i'm doing so when i hover over it i want to underline it i want the underline to be 400 orange text should be center thickness of two for that underline when i am clicked on it when it's active i want it to be underlined the underline should be offset which means it should be dropping a bit lower so in this case you see how it drops a little bit lower right then we've got rounded full padding four and a bunch of little other styling things including like capitalize there when i hover i want the transition to happen only for transform so when it scales up and down so in this case i'm scaling 110 of the 110 percent and the duration should be 200 and ease out means that when i go into it it should be super fast but it should ease out right so that's that's how we get this effect so you see when i hover over it, that offset that's what we're doing here right cool so looking pretty nice and now i've got the nav link component and let's just check on that for a second so if i refresh you can see look at that i get that applied to all of them so really nice kind of approach that we're taking here okay 
So at that point, we can move forward and we can now actually have where I have nav link. I'm also going to say if it's active, right? So I'm going to do some custom styling here. So what I need to do is I need to put this into a curly bracket, use our square uh, back ticks, have our string interpolation and say if it's active. So if, if is active, then I'm going to inject the following. It should have an underline. Decoration should be orange. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm forcing the hovered state on it if you're actually active. So if the page is actually active, right? And I'll show you exactly how I plan on doing that as well. So underline offset, let's do a value of four. The font should be bold and I want to do the text being large, okay? So at this point now, they're all active. Remember, because I forced it on them, okay? So at this point, we can go back to our nav links and let's just make our is active state a bit more of a make sense situation okay so now if we go back to nav links i'm going to go ahead and use something called the user path name um, function from um, next navigation right now as you can see this is a hook now server components are not allowed to use hooks and as i mentioned anything inside the app directory is now a server component so what i've done here is inside my header the overall header is a server component but only a small fraction of it which is the navigation links should use the client so by writing use client this now trans uh, basically converts it to a client component now i can use hooks on that and it means that it will load this when the window mounts on the page so now i can get access to like the path name on the mount okay and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create an is active function this is going to take a path right which is a string and it's going to go ahead and return if it's true or not and how am i going to do this well basically what i want to do is i'm going to say if the path name i'm going to split it by the forward slashes because imagine i could be in like the sort of i could be in um let me just explain this a bit nicer so let's just split i'll pop the last value and i'm going to say i'm going to compare it against the path right so what i've actually done here is imagine i'm on um my site.com forward slash news forward slash technology right so if i'm on here what i've done now is i've split everything so what it will do is it'll give me an array of three values right so essentially this will convert into three different values so i'd have one value two value three value so i've got three values in my array now okay then i pop which means i'm taking this last value out of the array so now what i've done is i've taken that into, and i've just got the last value then i compare this to the path now what i'm going to do is on the categories as i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to go to is i'm going to pass in is active and i'm going to pass the category as the is active prop so what we've actually essentially done here is now we're checking if i am at forward slash news forward slash business for example and the text matches with business it's going to go ahead and do exactly that right so it's going to go ahead and then have the following so now as you can see here news forward slash sports and it goes ahead and has the active state so that's done that's how we get that effect okay really really nice little trick Okay, now with the nav, we're gonna go ahead and do the following. I want this to be a grid and the grid should have by default four columns, right? So on a mobile view, I want it to have a four column approach. So in this case, let four columns. And then as it gets bigger, I wanna change it to a seven columns approach, right? So the I want these to be a bit smaller. So text extra small and on the medium screen, I'm gonna say text becomes small. You can feel free to customize this however you want, by the way, there's no right or wrong. This is just how I've done it. We're gonna infer a max width of six Excel so that way it doesn't get too crazy. We're gonna center it once it's got that max width and I'm gonna give it a border on the bottom of uh, one, right? So now if we were to refresh the page, you can see now I've got the border bottom. I've got the padding around it. As I get smaller, I will change to a grid of four. Bam, really nice, really nice, right? Look at that, perfect, right? So that's looking super, super clean, guys. Um, now we've got 300 people watching across channels. We smashed past 200 likes. Let's get to 300, 400, 500. Oh man, I love you guys. Okay, so at this point, that's that's perfect, right? That's exactly what I wanted. Look, oof, we've got the animations, everything looking sleek, okay? So let's go back a level now. So we can close these two files out. We can go back to our header. We've done our nav links. The next challenge, search box, let's get that done. So at this point, we're gonna go into our header. And as you can see, the benefits of making responsive design a component at a time means that when you combine them all together, you have this beautiful application that just 
neatly entangles and it just works right it's just beautiful right? really really clean so at this point we're going to go ahead and do search box i like to think of this like the header is always the warm-up when we're coding if you notice that it's always like the header starts off it's the warm-up and then we get into the real kind of nitty-gritty graphql jumps in steps in comes in all this kind of cool stuff uh apis get dealt with you know but the, it always starts with the header have you noticed that right it's like a football match you're warming up so at this point we're going to create a search box component search box dot tsx rfce bam and now with this one i'm going to simply go ahead and pop in so let's firstly import it like so. So bam, save. We're going to get an error because it hasn't got returned anything. Then we can see the search box should be there. Okay. So the search box, we're going to have it like this. And it's going to be responsive to the dark mode as well. So I want to make it a little, like, quite nice in that sense. So this is going to be a form because I want it to be submit. So you should be able to submit this form. Okay. Then over here for this, we firstly don't need that. We can clean up our function like so. Then I want to go ahead and have an input field, right? So this input field is going to be uh, what we're going to be typing in the search value for then we're going to have a button the button is going to have a type of submit because it's going to be a submission button and over here for that button we're going to simply say search okay so this is the overall skeleton that we have going on then i'm going to go ahead and install sort of instill some uh, styles into this so first things first i on mine says pop up bam that's what i'm talking about guys All right so max width 6xl mx auto then i'm going to say flex so flex uh, justify the items between and the items should be center and a padding of x of five so that way it's not touching the side as well now as you can see look what's happening right so justify between pushes them apart but this ain't using up the space right it's kind of a waste of space so at this point i can just say flex one and just like that now if i refresh bam it uses up the full space right don't worry that's because i just i done a hard refresh and it wasn't ready right so it had a hydration mismatch so at this point we can say flex one now i'm going to add a bunch of other styling we'll say the width should be four by default height should be a value of 14. uh rounded should be small so the corners want to be rounded off small the placeholder on the um uh you know on any view should be 500 uh, text should be a gray of 500 as I type in the outline. I want to get rid of that annoying blue outline. So we're going to say outline none. Um, and then we're going to give the background a transparent color. Okay. The dark value, we're going to change the text. So when it goes to dark mode, the text will change from orange 400. Okay. And then I want to give it a nice little placeholder. So let's go ahead and up here, give it a placeholder. And this is just going to say search keywords, right? I don't know why I turned well posh for that search keywords, right? So that's pretty nice now you can do this a few ways you can actually have this you know like be a client a server component only but in this case i want to actually disable the input if you don't and i don't want to have like i know there's a lot of ways you can do this i actually did it as a server component first but we're going to convert this one to a client component because i actually want to go ahead and use um a nice little bit of state trick right here right so you don't have to remember it's fully customizable thank you one of one for the five uh check I think donation because as a beginner would you recommend starting with typescript or with javascript when in fact later on everyone's pointing towards typescript no you need to learn uh, javascript first typescript is a super set of javascript so if you don't know javascript and you're trying to learn typescript it doesn't make any sense you have to learn the base then you have to add on typescript okay okay so in this case let's move forward we need a, a piece of state so i'm going to go ahead and create a piece of state to keep track of the input there's loads of ways you can do this um so don't think this is the only way where right, we're going to add the use state hook we're going to pass this in so we're going to import that from react and now i'm going to map this to the input so as the user types in the value is going to be mapped right but as they type in i need to actually update the on change request now a lot of you always ask me what is that this auto completing your text is github copilot it's just helping me out a little bit right so that's what i was going to type in it literally just auto completes it for me beforehand okay i'm still coding don't worry <laughs> so as i change as i type in it fires off an, uh, an, an event and then i update the text with that value right so now if i type in you can see nothing's broken that's what you should be checking for uh, let's go ahead and save right now hit refresh and we type in that is what you want if it's not typing in you didn't connect it properly okay so now once that's done i'm going to go to our button and first things first i'm going to disable the button disable the button if there's no input so if the user hasn't typed in you shouldn't be able to do anything okay then i'm going to go ahead and give this a styling bit of styling i'm going to say the text should be an orange button um of 400 and then i'm going to go ahead and say if it's disabled so you see how it's really nice about tailwind is you can actually access all of these different things then i'm going to say it should be a gray value of 400 okay 
So now you can see if I refresh, if it's grayed, grayed out and then only when I hit that, it becomes active. Right, so you can see then it becomes a search active button. Right, so you can feel free to customize it as much as you want afterwards. That's completely your call. Okay, pretty cool. So now when I submit the form, what the hell happens? Nothing at the moment. So I need to say on submit, and then I'm going to create a function called handle search. Okay, so let's create this function at the top. We're going to say const handle search right now. So const handle search. You guys are incredible. Honestly, everyone's like proper focused as hell today. Right. So this will fire off an event, which is always attached to a click handler. And also the reason why I had to use uh, the use client is because we're tapping into a handler, right? So any kind of click handler, any interactive handler, such as on click, on submit, you have to convert your server component into a client component because it essentially needs to know when the, the element is mounted to the window. It can't do that on the server because there's no window to mount on, right? It can pre-render things, but it can't do that. So that's why you have to convert it to a client component. That's why we have use client at the top, so we can use stuff like this. Otherwise, if you try to do it without, it would just call you out and it would say, oh, you can't do that, you need to convert it. So at this point, nice little trick. You hover over this, add an event, you can get the type definition that you need, copy it, get rid of that. And now I have a perfect type definition. Bow, it stops complaining. We can import our form event from React and just like that, it's ready. First thing I want to do is prevent the default behavior so it doesn't refresh. If we don't do that, it's going to go ahead and refresh, okay, which is going to break things out and we don't want that. And then I'm going to have some defensive programming. I'm going to say if there is no input, right? So this is uh, kind of a pattern, right? So you can see, yes, we are preventing it here, but you should kind of get into a habit of doing some defensive programming. So if there is no input, even if some developer came along, accidentally got rid of this, your code will still protect at that level as well, okay? So it's just a defensive line. It stops the execution if there's no input. Now, if it is correct, I want to redirect them to forward slash search, and I want to pass the term as something called a query parameter, right? So in this case, I need access to the router. So I need the router, and here we can use use router object, and we can import it from next navigation, don't make this mistake. There's two use routers. Next navigation is Next.js 13. Next router is Next.js 12. It is important that you do not mess this up. Right? Otherwise, you're going to get an unexpected behavior. Okay. So at this point, we've got the use router. And now I can go ahead and do what I'm trying to do. So at this point, I can say if uh, so router.push and I can go to forward slash search forward slash the input. Okay. And what I'm actually going to do here is I'm not going to do it just like this. You could do it that way to be fair. I just realized, um, or you could actually go ahead and do a query param. So I'm going to use a query param for now, which is also completely fine. But yeah, you could actually just go ahead and do a dynamic route as well. That also works. But in this case, I want to do a query param. I've done dynamic route before in the last video. I think it's nice to mix it up. So in this case, I'm going to say equals term, and then we're going to pass it in like this. So that's a query param. So nothing sensitive goes in a search field. So we don't care. It's fine. Right, so in this case, I can type in like hello world, hit enter. And as you can see, we get uh, term equals hello world. Awesome. That's really great. Okay. So nice. Now, um, the benefit to having that um, without sort of, you know, the actual dynamic card would be you could probably do some ISR in it, but I doubt unless you have loads of people searching for like Ronaldo World Cup or something, that would make sense. But okay, I'm not going to go too far into it. Yeah. So at this point, this is this is quite nice. We've got the behavior looking exactly how we needed it, and we've got this down to what we, exactly what we wanted. Okay. So I think at this point, let's head back over to our uh, header, and our header is officially complete. Okay. So header looks pretty great so far. So now the next natural thing is let's head back over to our page.tsx, which is our homepage. So this is all this, and as you can see, what's so beautiful? No matter what page I'm on now, my layout is complete. Okay, so really, really nice little bit of behavior there. Now, I do want to go back into my layout and I want to enforce one thing before we continue on. And that is that the body, right? So the body right here, I want to give the entire sort of app a styling. I want to make the background white. And to be honest with you, technically, we should be using something like a gray. It's more sort of clean, more, it's more friendly on the eye, right? So believe it or not, that is actually a lot more neutral to your eye than a clean white. That's just a UI tip. Right, so that is actually a lot cleaner than this because the contrast of that is actually hella different to what I had previously. Right, so BG is probably too subtle to notice, but maybe like a gray of 200. So even that, I don't really like that, but okay, I'm going to keep it on 100 for now. Okay, so we're going to do BG gray 100. Then I'm going to say on dark mode, the background is actually going to go to a zinc color of 900. Okay, 
Then we're going to say the transition should occur for all the elements and the duration will be 700. So I want it to be a nice slow transition, right? So on the actual app, if you can see, it has this nice slow 700 millisecond animation, right? That's what, how we do that. Okay, cool. Then for the div surrounding the children, so if you notice here, everything here is within this maximum width constraint. So what I can do here is I can go ahead and put inside my div a class name to say max width 6XL memex auto and as you can see now what's going to happen is all of the children so you see home page now it's not over here it's got this max width constraint so you can see once we set up the layout it's so nice right we have not we haven't got this headache of kind of like meddling around with things our code is separated in a really makes sense way okay so quick little water break absolutely incredible retention almost at 300 likes already amazing and so far for pace we're doing we're doing very well actually Okay, so let's continue on, guys. So uh, I love this music, honestly, it's so cool. Um, so that's pretty damn great. So what was I gonna do, right? So back to the page. So over here, now, what I wanna do is, again, I'm gonna mark it out. So I'm gonna eventually have a news list component. Oh, I love this song, right? We're gonna eventually have a news list component. This will take a news prop, right? So it's gonna have a news prop on it. And eventually we're just gonna pre-render the data in a server component like fashion here. All right, so over at the top here, remember this is a server component, which means I can make it an asynchronous function and we can do some really cool stuff, right? So before you're wondering, how the hell did he make that async? Well, because we're using Next.js 13, that's the beautiful thing about it. We can actually do that, okay? So before we do that, I'm gonna show you a nice little trick as to how we can go ahead and progress things further, right? So first things first, we need to fetch the news data okay so we're going to break it down piece by piece we don't need this at the top okay so i'm going to go ahead and say const const news and before we do anything else i'm going to say uh wait sorry we're going to create a function called fetch news okay and what this should do is it should take in certain categories in which are for, for what i want to basically fetch okay so in that case i'm going to go ahead and pass in all the categories and here what i'm going to do is i'm going to join them right so essentially i'm going to say categories so categories dot join with a comma right so if you think about what i just did there categories dot join would mean that i would have for example it would be like a general sorry general forward slash business for such a, does that i've just created a string for that value and then i've just passed it into the value without the spaces right so that's exactly what i've done there and that will pass through here now we need to create the fetch news function okay and then i also want to create a type definition for this called news response okay so first things first let's create the news response and then we can go into things a bit further in a sec okay and i'll show you exactly how all of this will tie together in a minute so the news response that we're eventually going to have is going to be modeled around the response that we're going to get back from StepZen. So when we make a query, StepZen actually does a lot of the heavy lifting for us, which is why it's so incredibly powerful. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I've got the type categories. Let's just pump that down a little bit. What we're going to do is we're going to have a news response class, a type definition. So news response is basically what I expect to get back from the media stack API. So this API, when I make a call to it, I expect to get data back in the following approach pagination and data now these are two different custom types that we're going to go ahead and talk about the first thing that's going to come back is a pagination uh, type object right so in this case pagination will come back um, in one as one of the uh, object uh, entries okay the second one is going to be data entry now you can call data entry whatever you want you could really call it article if you wanted to i'm going to call it data entry in this case because i can't remember why but somehow that came up but you can honestly change that you can change that to article throughout your app whatever you want but this is essentially going to be the article right so in this case actually you know what let's just make it a lot easier let's just make this article okay so that's a lot easier article okay um yeah okay let's just go with that <laughs> right so in this case that's the article um, and then, so that makes sense. The news response is gonna have pagination data and the data itself, which is gonna be of type article, okay? So at this point now, I can go ahead and, and you see, we get rid of that error. We just need to create the fetch news function. So I'm gonna go into my um, folder structure, go to package.json level, go here, create a new folder called lib. Okay, so this is gonna be lib or it could be utils, whatever you want, right? Lib is usually something that we use. I'm gonna create a new folder inside of here called fetch news, a uh, file, sorry. It's gonna be a TypeScript file. 
Now, inside of fetch news, this is where we start doing some of the magic, okay? So this is gonna be an asynchronous function, All right? So this is gonna be, um, I believe we have steps. Oh yeah, steps in the house. Hey, what's up? All right, so we got um, const fetch news equals steps in is in the chat, right? Where are they? I'm just trying to look for them. Uh, I've got so many things in my. Um, oh yeah, steps in. There we are. Hey, what's up, steps in? <laughs> I see you now. Yes, yeah, so we are jumping onto steps in in literally just a second, right? So we're gonna have an asynchronous function here, and we're eventually gonna go ahead and pass in the GraphQL. So I'm going to map this out for us, sorry. So GraphQL query. We're going to map out a GraphQL query. Then we're going to have a fetch function, right? And this is going to be using with Next.js 13, sort of Next.js 13 um, caching, basically. Let's just call it that. And then we're going to go ahead and return. Uh, then we're going to have a sort function. So it's going to sort all the, all the articles with the picture first. Sort by images versus not images present, right? And then we're going to return the result response right so this is the flow that we're essentially going to be doing okay now first things first is the fetch news is going to take a few arguments first one is going to be the category okay and this is going to be an optional argument it doesn't have to be there but we're going to basically go and say it should be a category or a string value the string value is because i might concatenate them for example if we go back to our page.tsx in this case i concatenated a bunch of strings okay so you can see we gotta be a little bit careful on that front so category or string, right? Then we're gonna have keywords. This is gonna be when eventually when I have search functionality, so we're gonna say string. And then I'm gonna have is dynamic, okay? And is dynamic is basically gonna be the difference between how I determine if a page is gonna end up caching, so in an ISR fashion, whereby on at build time, the cell will pre-build all the pages of the Next.js and then it will revalidate them every 20, 30 seconds, right? This prevents the API quote of getting exhausted. It means a more optimal, efficient way of loading the pages is also available. But we are going to go ahead and actually have um, search results be dynamically rendered as in the form of a server side render. So at this point, we want to have that is dynamic toggle to true. So all of this is going to happen. Trust me, it's actually really damn cool how we do this, okay? So first things first, we are going to install a library called GraphQL request, All right? So in this case, I'm going to install something called a GraphQL request. So in this case, we'll go over here, install GraphQL request. This is all the prep work before we can connect over to step Zen and set up things like that. So here you see npm add GraphQL request, and we're going to install GraphQL. Okay. Head back over to our code, command J, and we're simply going to go ahead and pop this in like so. I'm going to say yarn add Oops, add. And you, as long as you can put a space between them, you can install like five, six, seven, a million dependencies. David Kiss, what is up? I see you in the chat. What's up, guys? And also, remember, hit that little join button at the bottom of the screen. If you love to support the Papa Fam, you're going to get little treats available only to those members. And I can know, I can notice you immediately in the chat. All right, so it's hard to see everyone sometimes. Um, there we go. And then before we can kind of, you see this is throwing an error because we haven't exported our fetch news function, right? So in this case, I need to just go ahead and export the fetch news function. That's good. And then go back here. We need, simply need to import the fetch news function like so. And as you can see, this is freaking out because fetch news is not returning what we need right now. It's not returning anything, right? Which is why it's broken. So that's installed. Great. Let's go ahead and hide this out. Now we get onto the interesting part. This is where we're going to go ahead and connect to the media stack API. So first things first, we need to create a media stack API account. Okay. So I'm going to show you how we do that. So head over to media stack API, go up to the top and simply click sign up for free. All right. In this case, I've already created an account. So I'm going to go ahead and just log into my existing account. So I'm doing that exactly right now. Right. So mediastack.com is what you're looking for. So this right here, sorry, I didn't show you mediastack.com. Right. So in this case, um, you want to go to mediastack.com and then you want to go into a sign up for free. So I've already done that. Once you've gone ahead and signed up, what you will see is the following page. OK, so I will show you right now, but I'm going to show you in a way that I can kind of hide something important. Right. So give me one second, guys. Right. So. Once you do that, you will reach the dashboard screen, right? So you'll reach this section here. Now, as you can see, we've got the dashboard. We've got the three-step quick start guide. So this will introduce us to the Media Stack API. You can upgrade your plan if you want more. So in this case, just for the demo, I've upgraded mine. So that way I don't die out. But for you guys, 
you will get 500 free requests. And I'll show you how you cannot exhaust those if you do it carefully, okay? So you wanna copy this key. This key is very important. I blurred it out so that way it doesn't get spammed ahead, right? So you wanna copy that key and then you've got the base URL here. Now, if you scroll down, there's a bunch more information. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down right now. So at the, if you scroll down, it'll show you an example as to how you can go ahead and make uh, live news reports, historical news, or news sources. So essentially what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use this, but to go ahead and actually um, make a connection to StepZen's uh, uh, curl import statement, okay? So it's gonna be pretty, pretty cool. Right, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do all of this. So first things first, we need to go ahead and just copy this. But first, remember the access key was super important. So if I scroll a little bit up, there was an access key. I want you to copy that access key, okay? So I've copied my access key, and now I'm going over to my code, right? So I've copied my access key. I'm heading back over to my app. Now I'll go to package.json. I'm gonna create a environment file, so .env.local. This is gonna be our local environment file, okay? So at this point, what I want you to do is simply type in media stack API key. And again, if you don't put next public here, then it will not be present on the client. Okay, so we don't want this to be present on the client because it's a secret key, which is nice about server components. We have more room to protect our apps, right? By not exposing public keys because we just care about the render happening on the server and then the data can fly towards the client. So at this point, super secret key goes here, right? So super secret key that I just copied goes here. So I'm gonna go ahead and paste that now and then close this file, right? So I'm gonna do that right now. So I'm pasting in my super secret key right now um whoa it's dangerous stuff right i saved it close the file done okay so now i've done that if i hold up over here and i go back to my terminal we should see that i had a little change so if i restart my server now it will go ahead and load the environment files you see this from environment.local okay so that's what we want to see that's great Right? And we'll probably get an error here because we're not even, we're not actually doing anything here. So if I was to error, move that out of the way, you can see we've got this behavior. And this is happening by the way, because I'm on the dark mode right now. So I wanna quickly go back to my layout and let me just double check. Yeah, so I'm on dark mode by default. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this just for now. So you guys can see what I'm doing until I implement dark mode, okay? Because it's by default using my system preferences, okay? So cool. Now we've got that inside of our um, uh, inside of our environment variables, we can continue on. So what I now need to do is make a, we need, now need to set up our step zen. So step zen is where we're basically gonna go ahead and build out our GraphQL API in a really, really easy fashion. This is what I love about it. I've used GraphQL in the past and it's just a little bit of a pain to set up. Step zen are basically the middleman. They allow us to have this easy interaction between uh, our GraphQL API um, and whatever data sources we need. And they make it so easy to set up, okay? So I'm gonna show you just how you can do it. So let's firstly go over to our dashboard. So you wanna log in, head over to your dashboard. I'm just gonna quickly hide the screen while that loads. So that way there's nothing sensitive comes up on the screen. And then what you wanna do guys, is you're gonna need your API key. Now, when you do initially set up, there will be a moment where it pops up on the screen. I'm gonna see if I can find mine in the dashboard so I can show you how it will potentially look. Okay, so at this point, I can actually show you mine because it's not fully exposed. So let's go ahead and show you. So if we go into our steps and you'll reach this dashboard, okay? Here you've got your endpoints, you've got this really nice new dashboard that you can explore and you can, here you can actually go ahead, connect to the different endpoints and you can query them. So this is from the sub, uh, the Reddit build. You can see there's a bunch of stuff here. So this is literally like a graph graphical playground. So this is really nice, right? The guys over steps in have heard our feedback. They keep on coming back with this awesome stuff. But this is the important part. We need to go to our account and we need to go ahead and do the following, right? But before we do that, I actually want you to click the getting started guide okay so we're going to click on getting started right here and this is what you want to do you want to install step zen globally right so first thing first install step zen globally onto your machine then you want to log in right so here it will give you your username so in this case i've got a username here you want to go ahead and do that it will prompt you for a admin key this is very important right this is different to your api key this is your admin key so you need to do this step first i've already done it okay so um, I love what, like when something leaks out his techniques. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is it. So I've already done this to, uh, right now. So we don't need to, I don't need to do that. So you need to do that. And then you'll log in on the CLI, okay? Now, heading back over, 
this is the API key. So I want you to copy this, okay? So copy that API key, not the admin key, the API key, okay? This is, allows us to access steps in and execute queries. Then what I want you to do, head back over to your code, open up your environment file. I'm gonna hide the screen. So you thought I was gonna slip, but I didn't, I didn't slip, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and hide one of my keys for a sec. Um, give me one moment. Say super secret. Okay, so look at this. I, I, I've i learned tricks, guys. Honestly, I know how to get around this, right? So step zen, and I'll show you my screen in just a sec. Step zen API key. We need to add a new field here for step zen API key. All right, so one second. So, <laughs> okay, so at this point, we're gonna go ahead and add in our next uh, step zen API key. So at this point, you can see I've added in my super secret API key, right? So you wanna copy that value I just showed you, this one, copy it, and then you wanna go ahead and paste it over here, right? So <laughs> so you, you wanna, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my values and then I'm gonna hide them, right? So I'm gonna hide this screen. So this is your super secret stuff, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I'm doing that just right now as we speak. I'm popping that in. So I've got my keys, saved it, and I've closed my environment file. Done, nice, right? So everything's set up. All right, so at this point, um, <laughs> Jay, you, that was smooth, right? Smash that thumbs up button if you thought that was funny. Right, almost uh, 300, sma oh man, the likes are flying today, this is crazy. All right, if you're watching the replay, make sure you smash that like button. So at this point, we have our environment variables set, okay? So again, restart the client, um, so that way you get the new environment variables, awesome stuff, okay? Now at this point, I want you to do the following. So we're, now we can actually go ahead and set, set up our initial um, step zen environment. So we're gonna go ahead and open up. So what I'm gonna do to make it extremely clear is I'm gonna just simply open up another terminal completely. So we've got the first one running the app. The second one is gonna be here. I want you to type in step zen init. Okay, and at this point, this is gonna initialize step zen inside of our project. Right, you don't actually need to, I think you could just do curl straight up the bat, but we're gonna do that, okay, for now. Right. What would you like the endpoint to be called? So I'm gonna say hissing croaker is fine, they gave it to me, bam, hit enter. Now it says create a step zen environment. Okay, so let's look in this, step zen config, that's our endpoint, right? So hissing croaker is great. Now what I can do is I need to basically have our first pool of data, right? So heading over to the getting started section, which was over here, simply click that and then you can go down here. Now you can pull in your data from anywhere. There's GraphQL endpoints, there's REST API, SQL, NoSQL, Superbase, all that kind of cool stuff is supported out of the box by the amazing team over at StepZen. So now what I wanna do is I wanna pull in from a REST API. So I'm gonna do this. Now, all we need to do is we have to pass in an example of the request that we're gonna use, okay? Then we're gonna pass in the header in which like if we do have an auth any authentication, you can go ahead and do that as well. I almost slipped there, right? So at that point, you can go ahead and do that. So we just need to do steps and import curl. So, right, so what we're essentially doing here is we make a curl request. Steps then will literally look at the response that it pulls back and it will create an API Right? and the type definitions and all that kind of stuff around that in a GraphQL fashion, right? So really like mind-blowingly cool, right? So um, yeah, and there's also other things you can do here. So you can actually go ahead and do other endpoints, query names and all this kind of stuff, but I'm gonna keep it very simple for today's build. So heading back over to our code, what what is the API endpoint that I need? Well, firstly, remember we go back to our quick start guide, this one right here, right? So this one over here, and this is exactly the kind of layout we need. It's gonna be apimediastack.com forward slash v1 forward slash news access key, okay? So um, that's what I essentially want, but I don't wanna to have to make a connection to this or call this from my client. GraphQL should be doing that for me. Instead, I should be making a, a call to my, from my client to um, StepZen and then StepZen handles the rest, okay? So uh, let's do that right now. So what I need from this is I need to copy this Right, and I'm just gonna quickly check something on my end for a second, because I need a value that I've completely forgotten. Um, da, da, da. Right, so. Okay, so what I now need you to do is, in fact, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna uh, prep something on my screen, so that way you can do the same thing. So key, those here, okay. 
So you could go ahead and actually do this in a full approach where it actually does predefines everything for you. But I'm just going to show you a basic example and then we're going to add to the, the definition that it creates for us. Okay. So what I need you to do now is go ahead and this is the example structure that it requires sources, categories, countries, and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do is we've got this right here. Right? So I've created a dummy sort of uh, uh, request. So V1 news, and then I'm passing in an access key. So your access key should technically go here. Okay. So what I want you to do is the access key you had previously, paste it in there. Right. So paste it in there. That's completely fine. Right. And that's uh, that's gonna, that's very important. You have to replace this with your access key. Right. The steps. Uh, the, no, the media stack API key, the one that is available by scrolling up on this page. Right. So if you scroll up, there's an API key there. Right. So you want to copy that, paste it there. So I want you to do that right now. So I imagine I did that. Then it's going to say at sources and sources. And we just got two examples right there. OK, so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to do this exact command on my machine, but I'm going to write the following. I'm going to say step Zen step zen import curl like so and i'm going to do this exact command okay and remember your api key has to be there replaced okay so i'm going to run this command in my terminal right now okay so you need to do the same thing step zen import curl and i'm going to run that right now i'm going to hide my uh, machine so that way it doesn't expose anything that i don't want exposed so i'm just going to run that right now so um if you don't mean just that there we go okay so i'm running that in my terminal right now and um oops i've made a little silly mistake let's then count import oh sorry i've actually made a mistake there it should be step zen import cal yeah so i've done step zen cal import oh, silly me All right so step zen import cal and then your url okay so i'm doing that right now and oh in fact okay i'll show you even a better way i'll show you an actual even better way so at this point you can say step zen import curl yeah and this will give us a nice little prompt okay so at this point i want to go ahead and do the following commands i'm going to paste this value in so i'm going to paste my one in but my one's got the actual full value in there right so i'm going to do that right now i'm just going to hide my screen so nothing important gets exposed um so i'm popping in mine right now so i'm popping it in with the access key appended to it and so forth and then i'm going to go ahead and hit enter and then I'm going to hit enter as well. So it's asked me a few questions here. I've just left everything. Enter, 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 enter. Um, and I made a slight mistake here, right? So I can't remember what I did here. So I'm just going to go ahead and give this another quick try. So give me one second, guys. Um, okay. And then for this, I'm going to do, give me one second and I will show you exactly how I do this. Um, okay, in fact, what I can do is actually show you something a bit nicer than this. So let's do. Doo, doo, doo. Okay, so um, it was, in fact, that's an import. All right, so I did this a while back, which is why I just need to figure it out. So you got some live debugging here. Right, I'm just trying to find the exact command I used. Okay. And I made a silly mistake last time, which I'm just trying to find the fix for right now. So give me one second, guys, and I will show you how we do this. So this is exactly what we should be seeing. All right, so we're going to essentially do this request right here. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pop this in the command in a second, right? Right, so. The one that I needed was in fact. Okay, I made a mistake, right? This is why. So I know exactly why it happened. So we're going to go ahead and do step then import. I'll show you what the problem was. So what I was doing here, guys, the incorrectly was I forgot to put curly um, quotes around it. OK, so I forgot to say something import and then you have to put your quotes around it and then you have to make sure that there's no for a backslashes. Right. So this is very important. OK, so that's what I forgot. OK, so now I'm going to do that exact same command. So I'm going to say HTTP 
There we go. And then I'm going to say API. I pass in everything that I needed. And what I did here was actually slightly different. So I'm actually going to copy this so I can show you it afterwards. And ABC, bear with me, guys. On the replay, you can fully slow it down and watch it as you want to. All right. So I'm running that command now. And then it starts the command and it did it. Okay, so this is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted to show you. So uh, how can I show you this in a nicer way? Let's go ahead and hide something on the screen. So once that's done, what you should see is the following. Okay, so this is perfect, All right? So what I want you to do is this is the command I wanted. So you should run that command, I've hidden it, and then it should say successfully imported schema curl from step zen. So this is what you actually wanted to do. Step zen import curl. Then you pass in the API, API stack news forward slash access key, and then you paste in your access key here. Okay, so paste in your access key over here. And then what I've done is I've added in countries and I've added in a limit, uh, 100 and offset and sort published des descending, right? But if you really don't care about all of that yet, and you kind of get getting too much difficulty, you can get rid of all of that and just do that. Okay, so just do this and replace your access key and it will work. It will be perfect. That's how you do it. Make sure there's no backslash here, right? Because sometimes that can break things as well. So this is the ultimate key command that you need, okay? So I'm going to keep that on the screen there just so you can go ahead and do this. And obviously when I push this to GitHub, that's going to be the example I'm going to have on the bottom. So if you want to go ahead and get this, you can get the code at GitHub. The link is down in the description, right? So example uh, import, that's the one. Okay, so now what I can do is I can hide that and I can go over to our um, the file that it generated. So in this case, step zen config. No, so it's not this one. It's inside of our curl index, right? So here, this is exactly what we wanted. Now look at this. Look how incredibly powerful this is. So I bear in mind, I did not do this, right? This is where what step zen was able to figure out on its own based on the response that it got given. So what we did there is we made a query to the media stack api and then this returned all the information that we actually needed right so in this case if i was to run that actual command um in the in the browser so i'm actually going to do that right now i'll show you so if i do um api stack if i run that command right now in the browser so i'm just going to hide the api key so in this case i've hidden my api key but what you'll see is this is the response that it basically does when I make that API request. I've just changed it right now, the access key. So you see pagination came back. We've got the data coming back and so forth. So it saw this response and steps in generated all the type definitions, everything that we needed to go ahead and build a model around this so that we can make a GraphQL interface happen, right? And it actually did all this in the background in like a second. It done that so fast, it was crazy, right? So heading back over to our code, you can see here's our query. So this is the magic part, right? Here's the query. Now I'm going to make a few changes to this, right? Because I'm actually going to extend it. So I'm going to add the keywords. I'm going to add in. So I'm going to add keywords in over here. I'm also going to add in categories. So I'm also going to add in so countries, categories, and the access key like so perfect. Okay, so that's actually exactly what we want. And then in this case, we've got the root, which is basically the returned type definition. And here's data entry. So previously we had article, remember? It was just article. Um, so in this case, I could probably change that to article and it shouldn't break, but if it does, we can revert it, okay? So this is really nice. So at this point, Savvy Programmer, what's up? I see you, Ayo Tefira, what's up? So we've got the pagination, everything. So what I've done here is you wanna match these type definitions uh, as close as possible in your typings.ds.ts file. So in this case, you can see here, the only one that we've some uh, got changes for is the, the image and the author sometimes are not defined. So you can see pretty much one-to-one -one replication, right? And even here, what you can do is you can make that a uh, type like so. Right. So you can see pretty much we're protecting our types by having identical type definitions. This allows us to reduce the number of bugs in our code. OK, so once that's done, what I want you to do is head over to your terminal and type in step zen. Start. Hit enter. OK, so really nice. That was pretty tricky to go ahead and show without actually getting all of the things uh, on the screen. So I've got an error here. OK, so you can't actually change that. So we have to make it like that. OK, so that's fine. And then in this case, you can see it deploys hissing croaker to step zen. Right now, as you can see, guys, 
here we have the example request. So you can make your uh, a, a request using the following information and you have to pass in your API key. If you want to know your API key, all you have to do is run this command, step then who am I dash dash API key in your terminal and it will literally give you the, your key as well, right? So you can do that, replace that as well. Right, but in this case, we don't need that. Oh, so this is the live API URL. All right, so here's thing Quokka. So if I was to go into my steps and dashboard over here and I go into endpoints, we can actually now see if I go into my Explorer, we should be able to see hissing Quokka here as well. All right, so it should be, take a second maybe to go ahead and refresh. Uh, hissing Quokka. So hissing Quokka, there you go. And as you can see, my query, access key, all of this stuff, right? So you can either use the steps and dashboard or you can actually use your local host while it's running. And it's on localhost 5001. And this will give you a graphical interface, right? So in this case, you can click export. It will show you a uh, code that you can use. You can show the Explorer and you can go ahead and build out your queries like so. So in this case, I'm going to use the following to go ahead and test it out. So I'm going to put data in. So I'm going to pop in all my data like so. Okay. So I'm just going to say, I want all of this information back. I want the pagination data back. I want everything back, right? So this is GraphQL request happening. Then what I can do is I can basically pass in some parameters. So for the access key, I'm going to go ahead and hide the screen right now and pop in my key right now. Okay. So I'm popping in my key. Um, let's just pop that in like so. And I'm running that command. Um, one second, sorry, I've completely made a silly mistake here. Yeah, so I'm running that command right now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically hide my key, <laughs> okay? So there you go. So what I've done now is I've shown you a demo access key request. So I, so I put in access key. I actually had that as my real access key value. It wasn't this fake one. And then you can see it returns back all the data. So now we have a awesome GraphQL interface and StepZen does the fetching on their side. All we're doing is we're basically interfacing with StepZen, right? So StepZen gives us a GraphQL API. We make a request. We say, hey, I want this, I want that. Say if you don't care about the response, like the count limit offset, you can get rid of those. You can get rid of this data and you can only request this if you want it. All right, so really, really nice stuff, right? So um so sunny was like i'm gonna protect the api key better than my girlfriend that's so jokes okay <laughs> and here you got the query so this is actually quite important this part so what i want you to do at this point is grab this okay and we are going to update this a little bit more in a second but i want you to just grab that for now we're not using apollo client but that will help us out a little bit okay so um this is quite nice so so far I'm going to go ahead and just uh, set up my screens a little bit. There we go. Okay, amazing stuff. So we've got we got past that hurdle, right? So StepZen's done the hard work. And you know what's incredible, guys? That literally took like two seconds once I had the right command. Two seconds, the whole thing was done. Like, try setting up a GraphQL API and try doing it yourself. It takes a hell of a lot longer than two seconds. I promise you that, right? So at this point now, um, someone wants a, uh, the, the anthem. I see you. I see you. Uh, I don't know if I can see it on my screen right now. So we will get to that in a second. There we go. Let's do this. I see you. I hear you guys. I hear you. There we go. So, so we're doing pretty well, right? So we've got the steps and GraphQL API up. So let's jump it back into our code right now. Nice. And this is basically the next step now. So we need to, now need to go back to our fetch news and we're going to start implementing our fetch stuff, right? So let's um, head over to our fetch news so we're in there right now and what i want to do is remember i copied that query right so the query from uh where was it from the api so graphicals you can either use this one by the way so you can fully do that and type in abc pop in your data and see you can just do the exact same thing hit play and in this case I, it's unauthorized because i gave in the wrong access key right so it's completely fine you can do this as well and it comes over uh, or in this case you can go to the graphical one that i had open a second ago right so you can go to either one of those that's fine so at that point i copied in the following query from the graphical api right so i think they might even give it here i'm not sure let me just see add new query notes it doesn't show here the graphical one showed us there as well right but in this case we've got our, we've got to make a query okay so first things first i'm going to import my gql from that library we installed earlier right so graphql request import gql this allows us to have graphql sort of queries inside of our code okay so first things first we're going to go ahead and name this query and then we're going to go ahead and basically say query my query and this has to be my query at the moment because that's what the name we gave it when we set it up okay so that corresponds to 
if we look inside of our curl you can see here my query right so it's the same thing so in this case my query and then we need to pass in a few things right so how do we make this dynamic right now you can see it's a static value i don't want it to be static i want to pass in a few of my own values so the top query here what i do is i put in a uh, parentheses and i simply pass in variables so there's three things I want to customize, the access key, the categories, and the keywords. So I'm going to pop those in like so. Now notice how this is not TypeScript, it's slightly different. It's like the GraphQL type definitions. And this is saying that a string is required, categories are required, but a string for the keywords is not required, okay? So quite, quite cool way of doing it. And then over here, rather than this, we're now going to go ahead and do the following. So I'm going to go ahead and just have it set up in the, in the, in the following way. So access key is going to be passed in the dynamic value that we pass in here. Categories are going to be dynamic. Countries, for now, I'm just supporting England, right? If you want it to be the US, you could also say GB, US, India, everything that you want to have on there, you can go ahead and do that. But right now, I'm just doing GB to make life simple. I only want, I only want the, the British news right now for this example, okay? But you can have like anything that's supported on their docs, you can do that. Okay, then I'm going to sort it by published descending. Or if you want the other way, you can say ascending as well. And I want the keywords as well. Okay, so really good stuff so far. We've got all of the items selected. Okay, so that's great. And then we've got the page count limit offset total. Okay, next things for next things after that, we've got our GraphQL query. So part one done. Now we need to do a fetch function with Next.js's caching. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say we have a const, we're going to say we have a request. Or let's just say the response, right? So at this point, I'm going to say await. And our function is an asynchronous function. And this function is going to be a fetch function. Okay. Now, what we actually need to do now is I need to make a fetch to the correct API URL. So at this point, you see this, this over here. That's the one that we need. Okay. So you need to copy that command right here. Right, so on our, um, we actually got this when we launched it. So when we did, um, okay, so that's hidden down. But when we did um, steps and start, it shows this command, right? So that's the one that you want. So we're going to go ahead and pop it in. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and pass in some object information. Okay. So first things first, it is going to be a post request. So the post here is the method is going to be a post request. Secondly, we're going to have some caching, right? Now the caching is very important to understand what I'm doing here. So please pay attention, rewind it if you need to, this dynamic value. So in Next.js 13, I'm not going to dive so far into it, but I'll give it a brief explanation as to what we're doing here. We have two types of, two types of information. We have static information and dynamic information. Dynamic information means every time a request comes in you should fetch a fresh value right fresh data so you should make that request fresh every time so if i say it's a dynamic so the way we do this is we set the cache rule to no cache right oh it's no yeah no cache and then this means that every time the fetch is made it will always get the brand new value from an api then we have static data. Static data by default actually has a caching mechanism, but we can use something called the next config. So it's a revalidation property. And what this does is we can set something like a revalidate property to 30. This means that let's imagine I make a request now. It's going to go ahead and get that request fresh, right? Or at build time, it will have that request. But after I make that request, 30 seconds will start to go by. Now, if anyone else makes a request in that same 30 seconds, they're going to get the cached value. So the one that I previously got, they're just going to get that value. So in 30 seconds, only one or so request is going to be made to the API. And then the, the cached value is going to get served in that 30 second period. After 30 seconds, it's going to refetch the new value on when somebody else comes in. And it's important to know that they're going to get the old value. They're going to trigger the, the revalidation. So then the cache value will then get updated. And then for the next 30 seconds, everyone's going to get that cache value. So you see, you've got this static incrementally updating value. And if you don't have revalidate property, then it's just going to be at build time. But you want it to kind of update, right? So you want to have ISR. That's, that's what the benefit of it. Hope that made some sense. If it did, smash that like button, right? Because it's always tricky to explain this stuff. But yeah. Um, so we've got the method post. Now I'm going to say the cache. So all of this is going to be based on if is, is dynamic is true or for, uh, false, right? So at this point, we've got the cache. So if it's dynamic, it's going to be no cache, which means every time I want you to server side render it. Uh, AL says, can you please make a video on use local storage using next? Yeah, I will at one point. Um, and then we're going to say default. So people think I'm not live. This is live. <laughs> I'm telling you. And then we've got the default, right? Um, then we've got the um, next rule. So remember, I said there was a next rule. Now, what I'm going to say is, 
if the uh, if next if dynamic is passed in, we're gonna pass in in the next property. We're gonna pass in a revalidate of zero, which means that I want no cash plus I want it. I don't want a revalidation rule, right? Otherwise, I want it to revalidate every 20 seconds right so uh, you're always going to be up to date with the latest news within 20 seconds once you hit that page right so you can make it really like 10 seconds aggressive six seconds 20 seconds i think is fine right even for breaking news 20 seconds within that information is really pretty good right so um and it stops you from exhausting the api quota because it's going to cache those values so if you had a million people on your website it's not going to do a million fresh server-side rendered requests if if it's not dynamic right but if it is dynamic it will make a million server-side rendered requests but if it's not then it will just make a million cached requests so it won't be slamming the media stack api it'll make it once and then it'll just keep serving it from our other cell, uh, server which is really clean right really really clean right so at this point now i want to have the headers now the headers are quite important here so i'll explain this out so we've got the headers content type application json because we're passing in some json information in the form of the graphql query so this we're going to stringify pass it through then we need authorization so we set up our steps and api key earlier what we have to do is do back ticks capital a PI key and then space and then here right and this was actually given to us when we launched our thing so I'm going to show you this actually again I'm going to run steps and start so it shows you our example so you know where the hell I got this from right and if you do not know where to get your steps and API key remember you just run that steps and who am I dash dash API key command in your terminal you'll get your key set that as your environment variable and then do this right so this means that every request it will pass along our API key as well okay so that's really good and then we need to pass in the body Okay, so for the body, I'm going to do JSON stringify, and then I've gone, I need to pass in some data here as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the first argument, which is the query. Now query is the actual key and the value. So in this case, I'm just going to pass in the query itself. And then we need to pass in something called the variables, because this is what step Zen expects when it gets a request from a REST API. Okay, so let's do this right now. Lib Liberia is here. What's up? We've got variables. So let's do variables. Right, so like so. And here, what I want to do is I want to pass in the access key, the categories, and the keywords. Okay, so access key, categories, and the keywords. Now, the access key is the media stack API key because remember, Step Zen is the one interacting with media stack, so it needs the access key for that GraphQL request that I showed you earlier. Right, so this one right here, that's how we're passing it in. So you see what we're doing? We're actually going through Step Zen and we're making these requests. Okay, now once that is done, it's going to be quite important and I'm, i just like to have a little console log here that tells us if you're loading fresh data or not right so i'm going to say console log loading new data from the api for the following category categories and keywords right it's just a handy little thing to have when you're debugging right then we need to have a sorting function well before we do that i'm actually going to go ahead and pass the response that we get so we're going to say const news response equals await the response that we get here dot json right so we're going to pass the information that comes back so this will actually execute give us back some data and then it will go ahead and be in the form of the news response right here and then what we need to do is simply do a sort basically what i want to do is i like to have the articles with the information present uh, first right so with the images i want to show these ones first and then afterwards i want to show the ones without so i'm going to make show you how to make a quick and simple um, sort news by image utility function and then we can go ahead and implement that right so very very straightforward um, function here so um, let's go ahead and do this so I'm going to create a oops no. inside of our lib I'm going to create a sort um, news by image dot ts function and here what I'm going to do is I'm going to say export default export default function and this is going to be sort news by image right and this is going to take a news object which is of type news response right so the response that we got back is going to basically take that as an object right then what i want to do is i want to do two different splits right so from that news that comes back i'm going to have a bit of data inside of it right so what i want to do is the first thing i want to do is i want to get all of the news with image so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to go access the data that comes back remember let's look at the example response I'm going to access not the pagination i'm accessing the data right that's an array i'm going to go through and i'm going to filter out any of the ones with image no okay so filter it out so that way in this array i've got the news with image i'm going to do the exact opposite for the items with 
the um, without the image. So in this case, without where I'm going to filter that as well. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new response, which basically co like consists of this exact structure, but this array I'm going to rearrange it right. So I've got all of the image ones first. So how do we do that? So the way we do this is we say const. I'm going to say sorted news response equals remember i want to keep the current structure of the news right so i want to say um pagination should still be there so pagination news pagination right and you could actually go ahead and spread the news uh like this and then go ahead and override it but i'm just going to show you explicitly so pagination should stay the same but the data is going to be the following it's going to have the news with images first inside of the array so i'm spreading those out first and then you're going to spread out the news without images right if you want me to write a make a tutorial on the spread operator just write, let me know in the chat right now right andre smith what's up dude good to see you here um, and then what we need to do is simply return the sorted news response sorted news response like so okay so that's perfect right now i simply go back into my fetch news and i pass in my news response that i got okay so let's go ahead and do that right now and all i need to do now is basically the response that comes back is as such right so news response comes back and inside there's a, a data object called my query okay and this will actually have the data that we kind of need right so the news is basically going to come back in here so what i want to do eventually after that is return the news so in this case i can simply say return news now trust me let's go ahead and give this a try let's give it a test let's see how this has all happened and let's see if this actually works are you ready guys if this works i want you to blow up the like counter we're almost at 400 likes that's incredible thank you for tuning in right so now i'm going to go ahead and test this out head back over to page then we're going to go ahead and say fetch news data news response equals await fetch news pass in the categories and then i'm going to console log out the news so if this works because this is a server rendered component we should see the console log inside of the news so i'm going to go ahead and check this right now so let's go ahead go over to pop farm news and refresh the page and we get a okay look at that guys boom we have the data that's amazing that's exactly what i wanted right so look all the data comes back in the server amazing stuff that's exactly what we needed okay so just gonna pull that up there so you can see right now oh you also, also you you might notice that it says can't resolve encoding so i find this issue quite a lot so what i would recommend is cut your server just do yarn add encoding okay oops add encoding i love this song honestly i love it so much yeah, this one and then do then then do the uh, start your server okay so yarn dev right so now what you'll see is if i run this so let's go ahead and refresh let's pop this a little bit smaller okay now you can see i get all the data back for the news that's amazing and this is going to have all of the categories because i passed in all the different categories right so it will have right now it's probably only fetch the general stuff because that was the first but we should see other categories in here as well it depends on what the up-to-date information is because the last bulk of the information could have just been general information which is most likely the case right but that's perfect that actually worked amazingly right so now what we can do is we have our news right perfect stuff smash that like button because that worked perfectly as i wanted it right so now we've got the news so now what we got we gotta do is make this awesome pay uh, this, is, this is a really powerful bit to be honest right we're gonna create this news list component and this is gonna be one component that i'm gonna reuse a bunch of places right so and trust me, I've made it so clean. I'm excited for this bit, right? So now I'm going to say uh, news list, news list component dot TSX, right? And now we're going to fly. I'm telling you, this is where it gets really interesting, right? So we're going to create an RFC component, news list, and this is going to take a few props. The props are going to destructure to become news. So we're getting into a heavy flow state right now. We're going to remove this out of the way, and we're going to go ahead and introduce our prop def uh, type definitions like this, right? This is going to have the news response object inside of it. So news response okay now with this we someone says science should become a professor thank you i love that all right we're going to say this is the main tag inside of here i essentially want to render out all the articles all right so all the articles should be listed out here so i'm going to create an article component but before we do that i'm actually going to go ahead and pull in my news list component so here i'm going to go back into my page and i'm going to go and pull this in so we're going to say a news list component pass in the news like so news 
just like that okay and this just this way we have the news component inside and you see no errors no nothing that's a good sign that's what we want okay so now what i need to do is create an article component so article.tsx rfce this is our article component the article component will actually take in a few props it's going to take the individual article right so the individual article is going to be we have to again define our props so we can say type props equals and this article is going to be of type article okay remember we done all of our type definitions earlier right so uh yeah so that's gonna be a type article and this right here we're gonna pass through the values over here so what we're actually gonna do now is we're gonna map through that news right so we're gonna say news dot map news dot sorry this is really nice actually let me look, look at that oh type definition is on point that's what i'm saying look, new, uh, news dot data dot and then we've got our, you see all the type differences are correct. Like they're, 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 they're correct. And then it helps us out with coding. So now we can say for every single article that we map through, oh, these are the, the OG Papa Fam songs right now. Right? We're going to render out the article, but we should also be passing in a key. Right? So this one, I'm just going to give the article title as a unique value because we don't actually get the article ID, which is a bit annoying. right? Um, and then we're going to go ahead and pop that in. So bam, hit save. And just like that, we've got loads of articles here that are showing up on the screen, but we don't actually see the data of it, right? So what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to set the uh, styling properties of this. So that way, once we do get the stuff on the screen, it will actually look a bit better. So we're going to say grid on the mobile view. I want it to be a grid column one by default. So grid columns one by default. Then we're going to say on the medium screen, it's going to be a grid columns two. So grid columns two. And then we're going to say on the large screen, it's going to become grid columns three. Right, so grid actually works really well for use cases like this. Give it a padding of 10 and a gap between every component of 10 as well. Gap, right? So that just like that, you can see, look, we have on, on the uh, medium screen that goes to that. And on that screen, it gets to three. Awesome stuff. Okay. So now we go over to our uh, Marios. What is up, dude? Good to see you here. That's what I'm talking about. Quick little water break as well. This is incredible. The energy is flying right now. We have so many viewers still tuned in. Amazing. Right. Look at this. Let's go. Real Truth says under like. Thank you, dude. Thank you. All right. So the article now. So we're actually going to use the correct SEO tags here. So we're going to say article. And I know that sometimes they probably ain't 100% accurate, but it's, it's close. All right. It's close. So at this point, firstly, I want an image. All right. So I'm going to say if there is an article image, remember, they could be undefined. So if there's an article image, then I want to go ahead and render out an image tag where the source is article.image. The alt should be the article.title. And then I want to give a bit of styling. So the styling that I want to give, I've saved us a bit of hassle, right? I've gone ahead and popped in like so and then we've got the image tags like so so let's pop that in height of 56 width of full object cover rounded top large shadow there we go so look we've already got the images in all right and again i don't control what's in the news i just see like this is just pulling in live news right now okay so you see that right now we've got that and then we've got the articles beneath it which aren't rendered up because we only have image right now okay so at this point we've got the image then we're gonna have a div right under that div we're gonna have a, another div Okay, so right now the goal is that we get to this screen, right? So we're turning our current look into this right now. Okay, so in this one, we're going to have a H2 tag, which is going to be the article title, right? So the article title here is going to pop in and you can see, look, we start getting this nice little bit here. All right, Rishi Sunat's getting a free plug. <laughs> we've got a section and inside that section, we've got a P tag and this is going to be the article dot description. Okay. So now you can see we've got the article description. So in that case, a new new thing came straight in, a new live. As I mentioned, this is a live, right? The finished thing does look really good, right? It looks really clean. And also, do not forget, we're going to be implementing that beautiful thing, right? Um, somebody says, why aren't we using the new Next.js image tag? So the reason why we're not using the Next.js image tag here, good question, is because we can't tell if the domain is going to be from one place or another, in which case we can't trust that domain. If we can trust the domain, or if you have a middle step where you have a preprocessor where you can you have you know exactly where the domains are what the domain that comes in, because remember you have to whitelist the domain so that way Next.js can efficiently go ahead and optimize those images. But if we don't know the domain, we can't just whitelist everything. It's an unsafe practice, right? So we got the section down, uh, and then we're gonna have the footer of the section as well. Now the footer here, we're gonna have the P tag with the article source. So it's gonna be article dash source, oops, sorry, source. And then we're gonna have a dash 
and then we're going to have a p tag and this is going to have a live timestamp right but for now i'm just going to say article dot published app so article dot published app okay so at this point let's just see what's going on right you can see look we've got this and look literally new brand new news is coming in like this is live right <laughs> so it's literally coming in as we speak okay so at this point and what you might find guys i want to actually stress this point right what you may find is you're going to run out of the quota pretty fast because there's only 500 responses right so what i would suggest you do is make a request to that api endpoint like i did so like here right then what i want you to do is copy this information right so copy everything you see and then go over to your code and create a response response dot json file paste it in there okay so what i'm actually doing here is i'm creating mock data right so what i would recommend you do is you do this because that way you can stop running through your quota so go back to your page.tsx and simply import it right so i'll show you a little trick import so this is a nice little trick when you're developing um import the response from that response right so response.json and what you can say now is you can say news will be that or the response right and now what this is going to do guys is it's actually going to basically only pull in the uh the data from that request right so in this case it's not a good example because i've got um i've actually got a big enough quota but in this case if you did this you would have the correct one right so this is obviously not showing all the images but if you did need to do it then um since i just got a new keyboard and a new laptop no no i didn't <laughs> um so at this point yeah so do that do that trick and you won't run for your, your quota okay in this case i don't need to i've got i bought the upgraded quota for this exact reason um but in this case that's cool right so this is actually gonna be the live information but do that please otherwise you're gonna be like i'm gonna get comments saying oh, i ran out of my quota and it's a free plan and da, da, da. i don't want to pay yeah, so that's the way of getting around it and then when you're ready you can deploy it and then you can at leave your live one on okay so at this point guys what i want you to do is head back into your news list right back into your article and we're going to carry on styling so we've got the live timestamp which is looking pretty ugly right now we're going to make that look better in a sec and then under the div we're going to have a read more button right so read more button and that's going to eventually direct us to where we need to go so let's style this up right first things first the article i'm going to give it a bunch of styling i'm not going to run too far into it i'm just going to show you what i put on the screen you can feel free to pause and i'll just run through a brief styling so a couple of background colors dark color for dark mode flex it up flex column so everything stays in the column view around the corners shadow should be over it and when i hover it i want it to have a bit of a scale effect to it right the background should change very slightly when i hover it. and i want the transition to apply to everything 200 milliseconds ease out so which means i get a nice animation so if i do that now you can see look okay but right now it's, it's assuming i'm on dark mode right so what i am going to do is i'm going to actually go back to my original layout and i'm going to put back in my dark mode there Right, and we're actually going to implement dark mode in a second right so i'm going to leave this on here because right now all the colors are off but we're going to we're going to code in the dark for a second right and then i'm going to after this i'll implement dark mode so we can actually show you how to flip this and fix exactly what we have right now on the screen right so next thing i want to do is apply some other styling so here for the out surrounding div i want to do flex one flex flex column so this div should take up the majority of the room that's nice and then for this inner div this is going to also be a flex one and it's going to take up the majority of the room and it's going to be a flex column itself okay so let's pop this in like so and i need to refresh so it kicks into effect nice now for the h2 i'm going to add in a bit of styling it's going to be a font serif so a bit of a serif i think yeah it's going to have that nice sort of like you know news article feel to it um, and then I've got my section here, which I'm going to say class name and uh, we're going to say flex one. So by default, because I like to use dark mode and everything, which is why you're seeing dark mode automatically appear right now. Okay. So right now you can see we're, all, we're starting to get some margin top at the bottom. So it's starting to look decent. It still was very confusing. Uh, and I also need to basically clamp the text. So here you can see um, if I, you see right here, now for example if if the text goes on for too long i don't want it to basically stretch the entire page out right instead what i want to do is i want to clamp it so i'm going to install something called line clamp uh, an extension so in this case i'm going to type in line clamp tailwind 
Okay, so line clamp tailwind, and we can see this pops up right here. Now, this is an awesome little blog that they wrote, and it explains how to use it. To use it, all you've got to do is install the line clamp mechanism, and it basically allows us to have a bit of text where it basically goes ahead and does, like, for example, this will go ahead and say, like, here, dot, dot, dot. Right? So it's a nice little trick you can do to keep your stuff pretty neat. Go into our second. Uh, let's open up a third. Let's do yarn, add tailwind line clamp. And then you simply have to go into your Tailwind config. Go over here to your plugins and require this line right here. Just like that. And just like that, we've upgraded our Tailwind. Okay, so now we have line clamp. And as you can see, our IntelliSense even picks up on it. Okay, so your IntelliSense should also pick up on that as well. You can use Truncate, but Truncate is only for one line. I want it for like six lines and then I want to Truncate. That's why I use line clamp. All right, but good spot, right? Good, good little uh, bit of observation, but that's why we use it. So footer, I'm going to go ahead and pop in uh, the following styles like so. Okay, let's go back and check it out. So now you can see it clamped it, right? So it looks pretty nice so far. Um, there you go. Okay, so that's pretty, pretty cool. Remember, not all of these articles come back as like, you know, more than that. So it's completely fine. If we want to clamp to two, just to exaggerate the effect, we can do that. So now if I did that, we can see that like, it clamped to two lines, right? So you can just leave it on two lines if you really wanted. Uh, that's also fine. But look, you can see basically it can also work in that way. But look, it's actually looking pretty good, right? It's looking good. Okay, so at this point, I want to add in the dark mode because right now this is super hard to figure out what the hell's going on, right? So let's add in dark mode and pause, right? So we're going to pause here for a second because this is looking pretty cool. I want to add in dark mode and then we're going to add the search, do the pages, all that good stuff. We're moving at a very good pace today, right? So first things first, we need to add in our dark mode. So how the hell do we add in dark mode? Well, first things first, we'll go into our layout. I just repeated myself. Sorry, I was thinking about something. Um, inside, we need to surround the body with something called a provider. Okay, so provider, um, Savvy said you could use truncate with fixed height width. Yeah, you can, but it doesn't always work the way you expect. Right. So here, this is by default is server components, right? So there's a trick we can do here because to use any provider like Redux or any kind of state management provider, including a theme provider, right? We need to have client side rendering. But how? what if I don't want my entire app? Well, there is a pattern that you can use in Next.js 13 to save yourself here. This is basically whereby as long as we pass in, we can have a parent higher order component, which is a client component. But as long as it receives server components as a prop or a child, then it's okay. Right, so you can do it that way. So I'm going to show you what I mean by this. So we're going to create a higher order component here called providers. Right, this will eventually wrap the entire body. Now, this providers class, I'm going to go ahead and create like so: providers, providers .tsx. Okay. Now, from the layout, what we can find, which is kind of handy, is if I go into my prize do RFCE, and now for this top section, I want to copy where it has children. Right, so I want to copy the exact same um, arguments that it has over there in our providers. So I'm simply going to pop that in there. So this will also have children as an argument and the prop types is just a react node. And then it's also going to render out the children inside of it. Okay. So you're probably wondering, well, okay, where are we going with this? Right? So at this point, I just want this provider to use client right now. Now the biggest confusion I had here was, but surely if I make this use the client then everything beneath it is also a client component. Well, no, that's not actually how it works because this is actually a, uh, a child or a prop inside of this. And therefore, Next.js 13 is smart enough to know that you can still use, you know, it still wants you to be able to use server client components separately, as long as you do it in this pattern, right? There is also an incorrect way to do this, but you can check the docs out for that. All zero to full stack hero, I explained this in a coaching call, okay? So there you go. Now inside of here, this provider pattern, so this is where you could basically put in like your Redux, that kind of stuff, if you really needed it to, okay? But now what we're gonna use is something called Next Themes. So if I head over to Next Themes, so I'm gonna go into nextthemes.com, uh, not to come, Google it, and you see the first NPM package is the one I need, okay? And I'm gonna load this up and show you an example of how we do it. So I'm gonna use Yarn to install it. And it's essentially just a nice abstraction of uh, what we could do manually, but I don't wanna do it manually, right? It's an abstraction of themes, right? So basically what it's gonna allow us to do is you can see that theme provider, this is the Next.js 12 way in the underscore app folder. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna use a simple, different approach to it, okay? So what I want you to do is just follow my lead on this, okay? So here, 
I want you to simply import the theme provider. That's the first step. Import the theme provider. Okay, easy as. Copy this, simply pop in the theme provider. So now our theme provider is wrapping our component. Then we have to pass in a few attributes. So I'm going to say enable the system. Now what this does is if my system by default, as you can see, it's already doing this, but I just want to explicitly show you if my like preferences are dark mode, I like to code and do everything in dark mode. It's just easier on the eyes. Um, it will go ahead and use my preference or my Mac OS settings. Right, so that's why you saw it previously, but I want to show you that you can actually disable that if you want. And then I'm going to do attribute class, right? Attribute class. And because of this, what I also need to do is go over to my Tailwind config down here. And I also need to change the setting here. So the one that I need to actually change is the, I need to add in a dark mode class section here. So here we go, dark mode class, right? Um, and yes, Sijan says, can we nest multiple providers like authentic? Yes, you can. That's exactly why we have this provider class, right? Um, until these providers update their own code with uh, like the use client directive, uh, you can't do it outside of this pattern, right? So you have to use this pattern to make sure that it's enforcing it. Otherwise you get an error saying, whoa, 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 you can't have context and all this other stuff because it's a server component, okay? So this way it works perfectly. So this works nicely. So the first thing I need you to do now is we need to go ahead and add in, we need to, so this is the, the top level setup for us, right? So everything's kind of done at this point. Now what we need to do is head into our header. So command P is how I did that little shortcut. We are inside of our header and here we need to create a dark mode button, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and create a dark mode button right now. Dark mode button dot TSX. And the reason why, again, my header, I want it to stay as a server component. My component, that can in fact be a client component, right? So this one can use the client. So you see what we're doing here? We're optimizing it. We want our majority of our components to be server components. The server can take off the, the main hit of things. And then our client components are the small things that require it. That's our new mindset with Next.js 13. Okay, so how do we go ahead and configure this? Well, first things first, I'm gonna make a few different imports, right? One is gonna be the use theme from next themes. One is gonna be the state and use effect from react. One is gonna be the sun and moon icon. First things first, I need to go ahead and get a few things from our state. So I need to set up two, a piece of state called mounted. This means basically I'm gonna use this in a very careful way because I don't wanna basically mount this component until uh, it's mounted on the window. The reason being is, on the server, it doesn't know you're gonna get a mismatch error if you don't do this because it basically is trying to render it and it's like, hang on, is the person in dark mode or in light mode? I don't know. So we have to wait until it mounts the screen so they can check their preferences and everything like that and then it will do it. Otherwise, what happens is your server will have one result, your client will have another result and you have something called a mismatch, right? So you get this annoying error on the screen, right? So now what we can do is to fix that error, we can just say, um, we can have a use effect which says set mounted true, right? And this basically means a use effect is gonna run on the initial mount by having no dependencies here. We can set mounted to true. If you find this hard, check out the replay um, of my old video where I explained all about use effects. It's a really good video. And honestly, I'm not saying it just as my own. We've got very good feedback on it. It'll be out here on the screen. Jay will plug it afterwards or he'll chuck it in the chat right now, right? So in this case, very, very good. So set mounted true. And then what we can do is we can set a defensive brace, right? So a defensive bit of coding here saying, if it's not mounted, just don't return it. Like return no for the beginning, right? Once it gets past that point, so if it is mounted, I simply need it to go ahead and check the following. If the theme is of system, it should be the system theme, okay? Otherwise it should be the theme that the user has set, okay? So that's great. And then here, what I wanna do is I wanna say, if the current theme is dark, right? Then I want to render the following, or else I'll render something over here. So let's see how we can go ahead and configure this. Well, first things first, if it's a uh, dark mode, I want to show a sun icon. And I've got a bit of styling here with a yellow sun. And I'm basically going to run a on click function here, which is again why I need the use client. Uh, and I've got hooks here. So again, use client. And this will, if I click it, it will set the theme to light. And if it's already on the dark mode, if it's on light mode, sorry, then I want the opposite. I want a moon icon with a darker icon that will set the theme to dark. So let's see if we did all this correctly. So hit save, go into your header, simply pop in your dark mode button like so. And just like that, we should now see on our screen if we refresh. So let's go ahead and refresh. And I've got a um, hydration error here. 
So this is because um, I've made a mistake somewhere, actually. Uh, we will come back to that in a second. So that's exactly the error I was talking about previously. And this, I believe, is because of... Um, okay, so I know why this is happening. So if we go into layout, it's because I'm trying to render my head separate. So firstly, we can move the remove head because that's in a separate component. Let's go ahead and do this now. Let's refresh. And that's it, yeah. Because I was trying to render the head. The red head is actually rendered in a separate component. So we can do that separately. And it accounts for what we just did, right? So that will prevent that error from happening. So now you can see, uh, if I click on this, look at that. Whoa, look at that. Clean, guys smash that like button oh that's so beautiful i look at that and it just knows like it just cleanly now and it remembers look if i'm on dark mode and i come back to the screen bam it does it right really beautiful stuff like look at that look oh oof. <laughs> on that note i think it's a well-deserved water break absolutely incredible stuff killing it right now awesome Right, smooth switching and just like that you have light mode in Next.js 13 which can be tricky in the beginning but you see how we done that right so um <clears throat> so let's go ahead and continue on strong we're doing amazing guys let's press forward so at this point now what i want to happen is i want to uh, go ahead and set up the uh the the read more button and this and then we're going to do the search and so forth so we're going to move at a relatively different uh fast pace right now okay so at this point i've got the right so we're going to go into my article check this out so we've got the read more button so uh, read more we're going to go ahead and build this out so article read more button right so i'm going to go ahead and create a read more button Okay, so don't worry guys, we should be fine in just a second, right? Sometimes it has a little hiccup, it's completely fine, right? So just, if you have a problem with refresh, we'll be all good. So we're gonna create a dark mode button, right? So in this case, no, we've done that, read more button, sorry, read more button. And I think we're good now, read more button.tsx, there we are, RFCE, right? So read more button, perfect stuff, hit save, and we should be good. All right, so at this point, read more button. And then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and... Um, okay, so my connection seems to be picking up now, so it should be fine now. It just had some bit of a glitch, but I think we're good now. All right, I think it's back. Yeah, I can see the streaming is actually a bit stronger now. Okay, so now what we can do is read more button. So yeah, I see we're back. Okay, perfect. All right, so read more button. Hey, we survived, right? We don't let any of that stuff break us. I saw my, my bit rate drop and I was like, oh, okay, scary. All right, so read more. All right, we're going to power through this one, guys. All right, so article, let's go ahead and make the read more button now. So read more button. The struggles of being live, right? So at this point now, inside of read more, we're going to go ahead and have the following. So this read more is going to have a article passed down into it because we get article popped in here. So article, we'll actually get the article pops through it. And then in the read more, we're going to have our prop definitions be defined like so. So at the top here, we're going to go ahead and have type props and this will be the article type. Okay. The props come in here. We're going to destructure the props to get the article out. And this is going to have the type props. Cool. And this is going to be a client side component. So this is going to be for the read more button at the bottom there. This is going to be a client side component. So use client. We're back. We're back. Yeah, we are. Nice. All right. So we're going to have at this point at the top, we're going to have use router. So don't worry if you had a little hiccup there, just feel free, refresh your page and you'll be back on the Papa fam. So we don't let this stuff be us. It's completely fine, guys. No, we're good. All right. So use router. And then at this point, what we need to do is I've got a nice little function here. And what I'm going to do is all of the article details, I'm going to streamline it into a query parameter. And then I'm going to pass that as a get parameter request uh, in, in a URL request. Okay. So I'm going to show you how we do that right now. So for this one, uh, we're going to have a button rendered at the bottom with a bit of styling. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in like so. And we've got a handle click function. So the handle click function, I'm going to go ahead and run like so. Oh my God, what was that? Right, and then 
here what I'm going to do is a nice little function so what I'm doing is I'm taking all of the object entries right so this is the article itself I'm mapping through the key value pairs and I'm basically making a query parameter so that way I can fit all of the information from the query into a argument. And the reason why I've done this is because I want to basically have this in the URL. Nothing sensitive is here, so it's actually fine to do so. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and create a URL from that. So I'm going to basically direct the user to forward slash article with a query string appended. Okay. And then I'm going to console log that URL so we can see it on our side. So that way I know if anything's wrong and I'm going to push the user to that URL. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and refresh. Our styling should be down. Everything should look much nicer. Okay. So at this point now, if I click read more, what we should see is you can see author got passed in and all the information about that article got passed in over at the top. Right, in a nice kind of query parameter for four because we haven't created that page. So I'm going to create that page right now. This is where you're going to see the power of Next.js 13 because we don't have to you know mess around doing the the layout again we just create the page and the rest is handled for us right we are back with the viewership don't let any of this streaming nonsense you know we're freezing and stuff hit us down we are going strong keep enjoying this one guys all right so um jay just gave me the all clear we're actually clearer than ever right now all right <laughs> okay so at this point i want to go ahead and create the following so we've got um we've got a where is it gone yeah i'm going to create a new uh, uh, article screen right so in this way to create a new page so forward slash article what we're going to do is go ahead and create a new folder i'm going to create article now inside of that i'm actually going to go and create a page.tsx so this is a new page routing structure again you can watch my video if you're not sure about it okay so this one's going to be the article page right so the article page now we can go ahead and actually redirect the user to that article page. So if I was to click it, read more, you'll see we hit the article page, but the layout is still there. Really cool, really powerful, right? I'm telling you, it's really great how this works. All right. So at this point now, the article page, we can actually simply have like, you know, only what we essentially need here to be shown on the screen. So the search params, all of those details, like the parameters up in the top over here at the right. So everything I passed through, I need to access that, okay? So the way to access that is we need to access those type props, right? So in this case, let's go ahead and do that right now. So we've got the search params that come through here. That's how they basically come through, right? You've got your bunch of stuff and one of them is the search params. This is going to include the, it's going to be in the form of article information. So we're going to just ask it like so. Now, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to include a check, right? Which is basically going to go ahead and say, if there is no article passed in, then I want to do this not found operator from next navigation. And what's happening is because it's server side rendered, we can actually check that really nicely, right? So I'm going to show you a, a little sneak peek here of how I do that. So before we render anything, I'm going to say if the search params uh, exist and the object entries are length to zero. So basically, if you haven't got any parameters that are passed in here, and there is no search params return or there is no search params return and not found screen so if you basically imagine you try to come to forward slash article uh without any information at that point you probably want to go ahead and just you know remove this right so uh, then you want to show a 404 so if i try to go to article right now um and i got rid of all this information you'll see a 404 which is nice that's exactly what i wanted but if it's got information you'll see the article page right so i'm showing you several ways of doing it and there's so many different ways you can mix around with this kind of stuff right and then we're going to define the article here so article is going to get rendered out here and then we're going to go ahead and do the following so i've got a section inside and everything is going to happen inside of this section so first things first i want to put an image on the screen if it exists so in this case article.image is there and the article in fact we need to go ahead and pull it from the um the search params so in this case we're going to go ahead and pull our article from the search params like so okay so let's refresh now you can see i get a nice little picture right so this is pretty cool let me get an uh i mean a clearer picture so oh, we haven't got the, we haven't actually got the uh, the home screen set yeah so let's do something like um the fifa one or okay everything's just depressing news my god okay i'm gonna do this dog one right I don't know what this is. All right, again, I don't want to be. All right, let's do, it. Let's do Rishi soon. Let's get in a plug here. All right, so I'm going to click on him. And then inside of this, what we're going to do is we're going to have a div. Oops. We're going to have a div. Div. And inside there, I'm going to have an H1 with an article title with a bit of styling. 
Okay, so a little bit of styling here. Class name, padding X of 10 axes, uh, 10, 10, padding on the X axes of 10. Wow, I'm glitching myself. And then we've got a div here. And inside of here, we're gonna have H2 with the by, with the source, and with a P tag, right? So, and then with the last one as well. So I'm gonna pop these in first, like this, right? So in this case, now you've got the the source. So in this case, then no, right? You, but you could have a conditional, you know, thing here saying, you know, no or an unknown. So you could say this or uh, unknown, right? So if it was unknown in this case, you could do the same. I say just unknown. Um, where have I messed that up? Um, or unknown. That's fine, right? So in this case, we'll, we'll come back to it. If it's no, you can do a check. But basically, you can do that check yourself, right? Um, I'm not gonna spend too long on this. And then we're gonna have a P tag, right? Now the P tag is gonna have the article published at date. So it's gonna have the article dot published at time. And the class name here is gonna be padding left of four. Okay, and then for the surrounding div here, I'm going to have a flex box with a divide of two, which gives it this nice little arrow, a uh, nice little sort of divider. There you go, just like so. Okay, so if we go ahead and show this right now, we've got this nice little um, section right here for that. Okay, so you can see our nice little divider is there. And if we do this, it turns into a nice dark mode divider. Okay, then we've got a P tag with a description of the article. Okay. Now, obviously, if this had an ID, I would probably do this a little bit different. But in this case, uh, we don't actually have IDs for this from this media stack API. So this is why we've done it, right? So everything's looking pretty nice. And if we go ahead and move a bit bigger, you can see that we haven't got the, the section styled correctly. So I'm gonna add a bit of styling in for the section, a bit of responsive styling. So you can see flex column it on a mobile device. So in this case, like so, uh, let's do it right here. So if I refresh, we flex column um, and then if not it's going to go into this view right there so uh, i think i've mixed up one thing here so i want to show you something so in this case um my header title okay oh yeah header title this one i need to create a header title class so go into our globals.css style and we need to actually create a header title style okay now for this one I've actually gone ahead and done the legwork for us. So I was wondering, something don't look right here at all. Right, so I've got a bit of styling here. You can feel free to pause the video and literally take that. That's what I was looking for, right? So in this case, you can see we've got our news report. And if it's bigger on the um, on, a, a, on a mobile view, it goes flex row. Otherwise, on a phone view, it goes flex column. Right, that's pretty great. Right, that, that, that works the way I wanted it, right? Now, you can go ahead and optimize the images to change size and all that kind of stuff based on, you know, the clarity of the image. But in this case, for example, that a bigger image is going to show and then it will just go ahead and show it like so. Okay. So you've even got the buy here. You can see the editors come in and all the news is coming in. So this is really cool, right? And if you don't have an image, it will simply not show it, right? So um, here you can see, look at that. See, uh, and if it doesn't have the image right now, we've just got an alt tag pop up. Okay. But you can feel free to add in a ternary operator to have your own image and stuff like that. You can feel free to extend this as much as you want. Okay. So that in fact is the page that is done with, uh, I'll put something a bit more, you know, nicer on there. <laughs> that in fact is the news article page done. Okay. Next up, we're going to do the search page, right? <laughs> oh my God. Some of the news isn't positive. I'm sorry, guys. I have no control over that. Right. So at this point, we need to do the search thing, so the, the search page. So now I've already got this functionality where if I type in like World Cup, hit enter, you can see I get 404, but the search with the term World Cup comes up. So let's go ahead and build that page. Uh, Jay says, all the depressing news had to pop up now. I know, I know. <laughs> so in this case, we're going to create a search page. So search is a folder. Inside of it, we've got the page.tsx. And what I'm going to do here is I'm also going to actually have something pretty cool. I'm going to have a... Um, um, I'm going to have the uh, a custom layout and the layouts stack up on each other, right? So I'll do that in a second. I'm going to say RFCE and this is going to be the search page. We don't need this, all right? And I'm going to show you why I love this so much, right? Because you're going to see, you're going to be like, wow, that's all we needed to do, right? Because we've done the coding in such a way where it's extensive, it's reusable. So really, I want you to enjoy what we're about to do right now, okay? Smash the thumbs up button if you find what I'm about to do very cool. So imagine at this point, we're going to import our fetch news function and the news list components, which we already created earlier, right? Everything's created earlier. And remember, because our fetch news function was created in advance to support keywords, categories, all this stuff, 
Well, now all we actually need to do is make use of it, right? So we're going to pull out our search params from the props like so. In this case, we've got the term string that comes through. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a fetch call, right? So just like I had in my homepage, right? I had a fetch news call where I passed in categories. Well, in this case, now I'm going to have a different fetch call and it's basically going to be for the general. So I'm, I'm only going to search through general, right? So we need to make this an asynchronous function. So you can see I'm making a asynchronous call. I'm passing it. I'm searching through the general stuff. If you really wanted to, you could actually put pass in all the categories like I did previously. Then we're going to pass in the search params term. And then we're going to say true because this is going to be dynamic data. Remember, the third one is dynamic, right? So this will server side render this response. Now what's awesome, right? I can go ahead and pass in my news list, pass in the news, and I can even have an H1 tag, which is search results for the term. And we already done all of the header title reus reusability before as well. So just like that, because we coded it well, you can see barely any code here. But guys, check this out. Check this out. Look at that. It automatically works off the box. If I type in YouTube, hit enter, bam, I get YouTubers. If I type in uh, Microsoft, we should get Microsoft. Microsoft tech support. Yeah, there you go. Scam. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> right. So, again, I don't know why everything's depressing this week, but Google, look at that. Way. This is amazing, right? So, what are the top of Google searches? The news is coming up. Right, but the World Cup is the topic right now. So there you go, right? So we've got the World Cup news, right? Look at that. What's incredible about this is you see, just by coding things correctly, then we don't even need to write a lot of code. The reusability does the work for us. And just like that is so damn powerful. So literally, what was that? Like five minutes? No, if that, I just built the whole search page because we built things correctly in the beginning. So that's the importance of doing it correctly. And because we've got the new layout component, we don't even need to mess around with that anymore. Right? So it's truly, truly game changer in that aspect, right? So in that case, we don't need the layout component, right? We don't actually care about it. This works perfectly for us. So that's done. Now, I guess we have the aspect of what happens if I click on entertainment? Right? Oh, that's not ideal. Right? That's not ideal. That's not what I wanted. So at this point now, I actually want to go ahead and have um, something a little bit different. I want to have the actual page pop up. Right? I don't want a 404. I'm sorry, I was thinking that's why I went a bit blurry there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and basically have the following. So in this case, I'm supporting something slightly different. I've got a dynamic routing param. So I've got news forward slash a dynamic value. It could be entertainment. It could be something else. It's different from a query param. So in this case, how do we support dynamic routing inside of Next.js 13? Very simple, in fact. Here we have news. Then we have another folder inside of it called um, category. So this could be whatever you want. It could be ID. It could be category. In this case, I'm doing category. Now, make sure you click on that. And then you click add new file. So this is not inside news. It's inside of news category. And then page.tsx. Okay. We do an RFC. And now inside of this page, what we can do is we can say this is the news category page. Okay. And as you can see now, if I refresh, we get the news category page on entertainment. And also look how our focus is working. So you see that our focus is actually working now because we set it up earlier to do so. The is active prop. Right. Now, this is again, just because we've done it earlier in the correct way, it works exactly as we need it to. We can go ahead and clean up our code. We're going to create our type definitions for our props. And we're going to go ahead and destructure the following out of our props. So params are passed through as a wildcard. So that wildcard value, whatever it was called. So in this case, it was called category. Right. So this was called category. If it was called ID, then the type definition should have to be ID instead of what we have here. Okay, so this would have been ID if it was there. And then what we're going to do is destructure it. So we've got our category, right? And very simply, I'm just going to go ahead and import the requirements that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and import the required fetch news news list that we need. And then I'm going to do the fetch. The basically, again, as I mentioned, we've done all this hard work before. We need to make this asynchronous so we can do a server side rendering. Okay, so in this case, look, fetch news category. And because again, this is the beautiful thing about if you code, this is why I want to stress guys, if you code well, look how simple the code then becomes. Like look at this, right? Code news, news response, wait fetch news. And now what we can see is if I go down here, I'm going to have H1, which is simply going to have a header title with a category on it. So it'll tell you what the title is. And again, reusable tailwind component, uh, uh, custom names. 
and then we've got the news list itself okay so if i do that now and i hit refresh health news if i click on sports sports news if i click on entertainment entertainment news and just like that that works brilliant all right so we are almost almost there but there is a thing to know now because we have certain pages on our website which use static data in, in particular all of the genres general business entertainment health science sports technology all of this stuff is basically we could technically do we could basically pre-build these pages at build time right so if i was to do it right now these won't actually be pre-built right so basically the first user is going to get this long annoying wait so what we can do here is we can actually tell it, I'll tell you what, you need to pre-build these pages at build time. And then what it will do is it will enforce the ISR rules based on the fetch news because we're already, we're already enforcing it here. So this will take care of the ISR element. So the incremental static regeneration, which ensures that the cache is always validated within 20 seconds. If, or you can however long you set it to, if, you're, if we don't pass in is dynamic, otherwise it will fall back to server-side rendering. But in this case, this page, I actually I want to pre-build these pages, right? I want to pre-build them. So what we can do is we can use a special function here from Next.js 13 called export async function. And the actual name is called generate static params. So this is golden, right? This is actually a golden sort of thing that we must use here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to import all the categories because that's how I know which pages to go ahead and do. Now, all this requires is that we part, we just need to simply return a mapped function of all of the different categories. And it has to be category. If it feels ID, I'd be giving ID back and so forth, right? Um, so in this case, I'm going to say return categories. And there you go. That was actually the one. So in this case, return categories dot map. So basically, I just need to return it in a specific criteria. So in this case, I say for each category, I'm going to return an object. Now, in this case, you can see it's, it's saying params, but really the key here is going to be whatever your wildcard is. So in this case, if this was ID, the key here would be ID. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and say the value in this, in our case is the category, right? So in this case, you could pass in like, imagine if it was, if it was ID here, it would be ID, but for every single item, it's going to loop through. So in this case, ours is just category. Okay. And this will literally tell Next.js that you need to pre-build all of the pages for basically it will go through and it will build localhost 3000 or whatever the domain is news business. It will then go ahead and do the same for news entertainment. It will then go ahead and do the same for news general. It will do the same for news health. It will do the same for news science. It will do the same for news technology and so forth, right? Until we're finished. So now Next.js knows to go ahead and pre-build all of these, right? So it knows to pre-build these pages. Right. And then after that, because the fetch had the revalidation rules inside of it, it will then keep those cached values up to date. So I'm going to show you and prove to you that this is actually what goes on. And I think after that, we're actually done. So I'm going to deploy after that. So we're actually doing incredibly crazy right now. So let's go ahead and power through this. I'm going to show you right now how we can prove that that actually works the way it does. So let's do that right now. So our, uh, we're going to, we can leave that running. We can close this one. And as you can see, every time I run through, it does all what we need to do. Oh, and we actually need to eventually remind me, please. We need to go ahead and change this to a live timestamp. In fact, before we deploy, let's do that right so let's do that right now before we deploy so i'm going to create a live timestamp component which is going to replace a lot of our interesting things right so i'm going to go ahead and create a live live timestamp component right so live timestamp.tsx and what i actually need to do here is install something called react time ago right so this is a nice little uh a dependency called yarn add react time ago and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically create a functional component called react time ago. And this is what I need, right? So it's going to have a, some, it's going to take time as props and it's going to return the time ago, uh, component like so, but here you can see it doesn't have the correct type definition. So I need to copy that one and I'm going to do yarn add dash D capital. And that's because we only want the type definitions for the developers, right? We don't want it in the production build. So you can see that gets rid of the issue now for the articles. So inside of the articles where we had article published at, now all I need to simply do is go ahead and pop in my um, my new component. So here I can simply say inside of the p tag, 
I can go ahead and pop this open, pop this open, and I can go ahead and say live timestamp, and I can pass in the article like so. All right, and this one is actually going to be the um, this takes in time. All right, there you go. All right, and just like that, if I hit the refresh button, uh, sorry, I need to actually run the app. So yarn run dev, we should see a live relative timestamp of when that news was published. Uh, let's do that right now. So you can see, look at six days ago. Perfect. If we go to our general news, we should see the most up to date information. So 30 minutes ago, this one was gone ahead and reported. 30 minutes ago, that one was reported and so forth, right? Look at this, 39, 44. Again, I have no control over the news that you're seeing right now. That's just that's just real news, sadly, <laughs> right? So in this case, some of the stuff there, I, I have no control. Uh, and we also need to do that for one of our articles. So in this case here, where we have a timestamp inside of the page, we're gonna do that over here as well. So inside of the article page, I wanna do the same thing where we had our article published at. So same thing happens here. I'm gonna say live timestamp, and here I'm going to pop in the time. So time equals article published that. Hit save. And just like that, 32 minutes go relative. Bam. Just like that. Incredible. Right. Incredible stuff. Right. So now we've got the timestamp implemented. Everything's looking damn beautiful. We've got the search functionality in. So world cut. Hit enter. It will go ahead and search that page right now. So bam. Works through. We've got this dynamic effect going on we can go ahead and even check out the individual sections so if i click into sports it highlights sports and notice how it kept that there because it didn't even re-render it done the new streaming technique inside of um, next.js 13 we've got this lovely ability here to go ahead and change the color of the cards like so really beautiful stuff right and in fact i need to add a shadow here because that's the only reason that it's looking a bit funky right now so the article itself i believe it needs a shadow so if we add a shadow large i think that might do it for us um let's do that right now i think in fact yeah if we had a shadow large that's a little bit more clearer yeah so shadow large a little bit nicer um and then on the bigger screen we can even do a shadow excel there we go all right so that's the only reason why it was a little bit tricky to see there but now a little bit nicer to see the spot right as you can see the nice little there you go that's a bit cleaner to see now we can actually see it popping out a little bit uh, if you really wanted you can add a you know an additional thing but i kind of like that look okay so at this point amazing stuff um what if we want to benefit from the next js 13 um loading right so oh my god <laughs> some news fun oh my god okay so um what if i want to benefit from the new loading section so if i want to go to sports for example let's go ahead and introduce the new loading state as well so if i introduce a loading.tsx page this is a brand new feature in next.js which basically means that if i'm blocked at any point so in this case i'm blocked here it's awaiting the news to come back whilst it waits i can have a loading screen on the page in any fashion that i want so I can go ahead and do the following, right? I can actually have a component that looks something like this. So I can have a, a functional component and it just says loading newsfeed, right? Let's go ahead and hit return. Now check this out, guys. Absolutely incredible stuff. Watch this, right? So if we refresh and let's just go back to the, um, the homepage, loading newsfeed, did you see that? It says loading newsfeed, look. So it's very fast, but if I was to throttle the connection, I was actually gonna try and optimize it, which is even better. But in this case, it's so fast that it still does it, right? Even if I do slow 3G, it's still gonna do it. Um, yeah, it's still gonna do it because it's very clever, right? How it does it. It's, it's actually caching images and stuff as well. So let's do no throttle. And I just want you to catch that loader in the beginning, right? So if I was to go ahead and do the follow, I mean, what we could do here is force it, right? I could actually go ahead and say page and I can use GitHub Copilot to say, set timeout for three seconds, right? And then we just get that code quickly. There we go, All right? So let's go ahead and do that now. So if we look at that loading news feed, three seconds later, bam, look at that. So if there's ever a block, yeah? In this case, so if I do this now, look, loading news feed, Bam, and it's using React Suspense to do that. So absolutely, incredibly powerful. And you also have one for the loading state, right? So look at this, absolutely incredible stuff. We have our awesome Papa Fam live news app with everything in it. Next.js 13 is goddamn powerful, right? Steps in, incredibly powerful, allows us to create a GraphQL API, all that beautiful stuff. 
just work seamlessly, right? So I'm going to show you now how the quickest way that I know how to deploy this. Now you can do two approaches here. You can go ahead and deploy using the Versal CLI, which I made a whole video on. You can watch it somewhere around here, or you can deploy to GitHub and then you can actually connect your GitHub repo. There's so many ways to do it, but I'm going to show you the Vercel CLI way because it's kind of cool, right? So firstly, you need to install the Vercel CLI. I'm not going to run through that. You can simply do that by heading to, just type in Vercel CLI in Google. It'll show you how to install the CLI. It's npm uh, i-g Vercel. And then you can go ahead and do that. But once we've done that, I've already logged into my Vercel, uh, um, um, my Vercel uh, login, right? So in this case, you could do Vercel login. I've already done this. So now if I type in Vercel, right? Check out this, right? If I click in Vercel, set up and deploy. So in this case, I'm going to say the news app on YouTube. Yes, enter, right? Loading scopes. So I'm already logged into Sunny Sango on Vercel. So at this point, I can go ahead and click enter, right? And then it says link to existing project. I want to click enter, which is no. I don't want to link it to an existing project. What's your project name? That's fine. We can do that one. Okay, great. What directory is your code located in? It's in the current directory. Enter, fine. Setting up the project. You upload some of the data. There you go. And now you can see it's going to run next build, next dev port, and so forth. Do you want to modify these settings? Nope, I'm happy with that. It says deploying the news app. So at this point, we should have done um, a, a build first, to be fair. But what I want to show you is this is going to fail because we haven't set our environment variables. So I'll show you how an easy way of doing it is. So go into your environment variables right now. Click it, and I'm not going to show you right now, but I'm going to click it. I'm going to copy my environment variable. So I've copied them right now. I'm going to come back. Okay, so I've copied my environment variables. Literally, I've done Command A and I copied everything. Go into your inspect, right? So that it gives you a little link here to inspect the build process. This is so sick, right? It's so powerful. What I want you to do is go to News App YouTube. Uh, click on that top bit. Click on Settings. Go into Environment Variables and simply click uh, do command v right so paste so i'm going to go ahead and paste right now right so i'm going to show you what just happened right so i'm going to pay i clicked paste i literally done uh, command um, v paste and then i'm simply going to click on save and i'll show you exactly what i did there right so at this point i done command v and it, it copied in like so and then i want you to click on the save down here and you can toggle in the different production preview development environments and that kind of stuff as well okay so check this out someone says is it live it's definitely live right so i'm gonna just hide that for a sec i'm clicking save okay and now you can see i have those environment variables loaded here Okay, so what we should see here is you see it failed. Now, the reason why it failed is because of the, it didn't have the environment variables in there. Okay, so I want to show you two things that just happened. Firstly, if I do Vercel environment pull, I can even pull those environment variables down, right? So at this point, if I go ahead and open up this new file that came in, .env, so I'm going to open that up right now. This is actually created and I'm just replacing my environment variables here so you don't see them. Um, so in this case, this pulled in the following environment variables into the file. It pulled in all this stuff, right? Now, the ones that you most paid, like the most interesting ones were these two. These two are the ones I just added on the CLI. And this actually had my values in there. I promise you, it had my values in there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and undo those. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say Vercel. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to do yarn, yarn build. Okay, so yarn build. You could do Vercel build as well, I really don't matter at this point. Um, yarn build. So I'm building it out. And now what I want you to pay attention to is remember I told you that generate static params. Notice how it builds out the pages for each of those. So the console logs are coming out because I still left the console logs in. You should probably remove those. But look what I said. Remember I said it's going to build out those pages. It did just that. It built out those pages as static generated pages. And then it's got the refetch mechanism under it. So it keeps on caching, uh, keeps it up to date, right? So check this out. Now that we've got the build in our output folder, I can type Vercel. Bam, hit enter and wait for it, guys. Right now, what this is doing, the Vercel connection is already made. The build log is right here. I can go ahead and open this up like so. Thank you so much for Abel Adamo for the $10 donation. I appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much. All right. So I want to show you two sides of the story, right? So at this point now, while this is loading up, you can see this will, the CLI will tell me what's going on. Or we have the build process right here. So the build process is literally building it out. This will literally build the pages. So actually, to be fair, I didn't need to do yarn build. It was actually running the cell build on the there and anyway, right? 
so let this run hopefully we have no other issues but if so i think we're damn good right this is actually incredibly good so far collecting the page data it should go ahead and successfully collect all of the data right so hopefully no issues come on yes there it is in my logs so right, i should probably get rid of those and then look it pre-built the pages done what we needed to do build was completed and then it's going to go ahead and push this out to a url so wait for it wait for it guys wait for it hey there we go and look at that and it even gives me the preview url here now i did show you how to deploy a cli app to production you can check out the video over here it's going to be linked in the description jay's going to chuck it in the chat right now that's how to deploy any app with the vassell cli but i want to show you both right some of my videos i show you how to push to github but this one i show you how to do cli i think it's really cool so this is on the preview environment you can push the prod by doing vassell dash dash prod All right but let's go ahead and check it out bam just like that just like that smash that thumbs up button oh my god look at that beautiful absolutely beautiful dark mode light modes working if i click on sports just like that works if i type in ronaldo just like that wait for it wait for it. you can add a loader in by the way there look at that just like that, ronaldo news comes up bam perfect stuff absolutely incredible light mode dark mode everything that we wanted inside of a build today like, look at that, guys. Absolutely incredible. Boom. I hope you've enjoyed that. That was damn powerful. Let me do a quick run through of exactly what we did today. We went ahead. We built out this beautiful UI. Absolutely incredible UI. It's live right now. You can go and believe me. Go check for yourself. Why? Right? Everything's working the way we expected it. We got dark mode. We got server components. We've got client components. We've got the new app folder structure inside of our app. I showed you how to deploy with the Vassell CLI. We had server component logic and when and how to convert them to client components when needed. We showed you the provider pattern in the first initial layout. So you now know how to do providers with the client side part, right? We have dynamic page routing in a bunch of different situations. Like you can see over here with the category, we pulled our information from the media stack API. So we had all this beautiful knowledge being passed in live data news from the media stack API. Steps then came in incredibly powerful to go ahead and power this up. If you want to go ahead and use it, remember the first link in the description, use that link when you sign up to StepZen because it's going to help support the Papa fam. I'll be honest with you. It helps us out. I hope I can keep on giving you free content if you do that. So it helps out a lot. All right. So make sure you use the first link in the description. You can check out the new dashboard. Absolutely incredible. You've got code snippets, all this useful stuff. And um, yeah, there's so many questions that people are having. I can see in the chat right now. And remember, guys, if you want more information, if you want answers to those questions, head over to popreact.com. Join our community and our flagship course if you want to go ahead and build everything out. All right. So Zero to Full Stack Hero is where we have a game changer level of community. Right. The course is jam packed with over 100 hours of content everything you could possibly want to learn from web development is in there and i teach weekly coaching calls inside of there so make sure you definitely make sure you definitely check that out oh i can i can hear myself what the hell okay um i'm gonna mute that what the hell's going on <laughs> so make sure you definitely check this out and then um if you do want to make sure oh yeah that was me there okay there's i was wondering how, why can i hear myself All right make sure you check this out popreact.com forward slash course and if you want to go ahead and get daily coding challenges into your inbox then go to the first link at the top popperreact.com forward slash the university of code it is live the literally the first one of our first uh, uh, no, another daily coding challenge goes out in about an hour and 20 minutes so if you want to sign up and get your first coding challenge an hour and then every single day you're going to get daily coding challenges over at the university of code i promise you we put so much time and effort into this and this has been the by far one of the best ways that we've seen students achieve their sort of you know development in terms of their fundamentals their javascript knowledge just by having daily problems given to them so make sure you check out the university of code links to zero to full stack hero links to the university of code links to step zen setting up everything is in the description if you want access to the code feel free to go ahead and check out the papa github repo and remember if you want access to the music playlist university of code we give it to you for free once you sign up right so Thank you for tuning in today. Absolutely incredible. We just pushed over 400 likes. That's the way that I like to end things off. I'm going to end this off the way that we do. We, the only way we know. The Papa Fan way. Thank you for tuning in, guys. You learned Next.js 13, TypeScript, Tailwind, 
all this incredible stuff like dark mode just a final final look at the build today that we went ahead and built out incredible really such a fun build to go ahead and be able to teach you guys and if you are watching this on the replay please 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 drop a little rocket emoji to show me you made it to the end of this video as always guys it's your boy sunny aka papa react and i will see you in the next video make sure you go ahead sign up to this, this sign up to this build right just do this build right make sure you do it uh, add it to your portfolio get that dream job crush it and I hopefully will see you in Zero to Full Stack Hero. But thank you guys for tuning in. Here's the Papa Fan build. As always, guys, I'm going to rock out the way we know. Just chuck your chat in right now where you're watching from if you're still watching. And uh, it's been a pleasure always today, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.